All right, we are live here on the Alan Steele Show. I have my guest, Sean Conover. You, oh my God, you're probably the first person in about six years to pronounce it right. Really? Time, yep. Man, get, I'm doing something good. Oh, you know, I get can opener, can over. Where you can see opener. an A in that motherfucking name? I don't see one anywhere. That's no, man, right. uh, I reached out to you. You came on, and uh, I watch all your videos, and uh, I really yeah, enjoy I them. That, dude. You don't uh, sugarcoat anything. You're point blank and on point with all of it, and uh, I appreciate you coming on, man. Sugars for pussies. I, I appreciate you having me, man. That was awesome. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we reached out to a bunch of folks and told told everybody we were going to be on tonight, but uh, this is a, a rare treat. It's a, a rare opportunity. I don't absolutely. have it like Matt Best, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So what you got going on down there? What, the RPK? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, we always, I, you know, you watch the show. Always lead in with our three favorite topics, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. But <laughs> we got all three right here. What are you drinking? Patron, my man, Patron. I got a little Bud Light here. Uh, we got three topics we're going to try to hit on tonight. We're Main one is Afghanistan, second one, Second Amendment rights, and third one, COVID. Oh, shit. He said the C word. Which one do you want to talk about first? I, you know, I think uh, the one that's closest to both our hearts is fucking probably. Well, I can't say that because Second Amendment, but I mean, fucking Afghanistan. You know, I think that's the one that's right, fresh in everybody's mind, even though I hate to follow fucking what the local media does. They don't think I can get you off on a topic and then you forget about the fucking COVID over here. Yeah. Right? But, um, I don't know, man. But uh, I told, I put the number out. You know, I don't know if you want to put that number out real quick so that everybody knows that's, um, um, you know, on Facebook or on YouTube so they know that uh, we'll be entertaining calls here in a few minutes if you want. Yeah, if you want to call in, it's set up to receive a call if you want to chime in ask a question uh feel free the first people time know my number been able to do this man this is awesome yeah i'm excited yeah. about it so uh getting into afghanistan what, what what's your whole take on it what's my whole take on it yeah <laughs> yeah that's about what i think man <laughs> uh, <laughs> You, <laughs> you know, the, we're at a disadvantage here because we had that long ass conversation earlier today. We probably would have done a show on the phone earlier, but oh, oh I agree. I mean, you know, you're like, but uh, and then the viewers, you know, I've been doing like TikToks and uh, little Twitter videos. I mean, dude, I if it wasn't for calling and, and I talked to a kid uh, out in Arkansas the other day, and yesterday we talked for three fucking hours. Never met the guy in my life. Really? Um, yeah, kind of like kind of same thing. Follows me on Facebook, watches Whiskey Tangle Foxtrot. Um, but it's that you know, that brotherhood, another 11 bang bang, you know. Um, chewed a lot of the same fucking dirt, and it was like, dude, you my fucking long life, you know, one of those long, that brotherhood, right? And 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 it was it was awesome, but uh, uh, yeah, everybody that I talk to that's a veteran is just fucking pissed, you know. It, I don't know what you watch for your news news outlets, you know. But um, I don't watch them because I wouldn't own a TV if I uh, if I watched <laughs> the news, man. I would break every TV in my house. <laughs> I'm about to. I watched Megan Kelly after Hannity tonight. We came in, my wife and I were out working outside and shit, and came in and just caught a little bit over dinner. And, and uh, her lead in was talking about obviously Afghanistan and the debacle. And I have to disagree with the woman on one thing. She came out and she said. Uh, well, she played, first of all, she played a, a clip from one of the mothers of one of the soldiers or one of the Marines that died. He was the Marine sniper. She's talking about, you know, he the kid had 156 IQ. He's got me beat by about eight points. Um, so, you know, he, quali he qualifies for everything above being an E-style target in the military. And uh, uh, but she said she she called Joe Biden what he is, a piece of crap. And I was like, God, love you, woman. And uh she, I mean, I know she's feeling emotional and everything. There's something to it, you know, and, and, and you know, you know about the rift that's in this country right now, right? Yeah, it's 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 at its all time high. Yeah. They, I don't think that we were this divided before the Civil War. I really don't. Um, and, and it's not along color lines. It's not along religious lines. It's along political lines. And that's even more dangerous. Mm -hmm. And uh 
it's um but 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 she called out that she said all you democrats that supported joe biden my son's blood is on your hands you know and and and, and but we've been saying this on our program and and, and uh you know i don't i don't i'm sure you probably said it on some of your programs you know it's like fucking elections have consequences yeah and and this is one of the worst consequences you could possibly have electing somebody that's that's well we all know that joe biden's not steering the boat no. right but um the people that are around him you know they always think of they always we always focus on the presidency and we focus on the senators and the congressmen and shit like that and we think we forget about all the little fish and stuff that really make up the bulk of it you know the mayors the the, the governors and, and your state senators and shit like that and and uh that's what we've got to get back to taking back. And that's why I'm kind of glad to see that, like, I know this is a little off topic, that in 2022, we're seeing a huge influx down here in Florida of veterans who are, you know, combat veterans of the, the GWAT, right, that are, are uh, running for offices and stuff. I might yeah. actually run for dog catcher or some shit. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I'll go wear it with you because that's about all I'm good for. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I'm afraid I if I tried for anything else, I'd probably get assassinated because my mouth gets me in more trouble than anything else. But oh, yeah. I really don't give a shit. Yo, I'm you know, I'm the same way, man. I have no filter. You know, I should, but I just, I can't right. keep my pie hole shut ever. You know what? I, you know, I, 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 would, I would be remiss to leave this out because my, my viewers don't know you. Mm -hmm. And your viewers don't know me. Let's get an introduction. Alan, who are you? So that these guys on Facebook that are watching know who you, who this guy is that's that's hijacked our show. Yeah. Uh, so I come from a military background. My uh, my family all served in the military. I, I'm a uh, Iraq War veteran. Uh, yeah, I deployed with 3rd ID back in 2005. Well, the end of 2004, all through 2005, on the end of 06, and then came back and... Uh, you know, got orders to go to Fort Riley. Uh, had was going to reenlist, but you know, I wanted to live my my uh, childhood dream and to get into NASCAR. Uh, got out. The real sport. Moved, yeah, moved all my shit to North Carolina, and uh, yeah, the rest is history. You know, I was part of uh, several different high organizations like Hendrick Motorsports, Richard Childress Motorsports, Kyle Busch Motorsports, JTG Motorsports. Uh, Michael Waltrip racing and uh, I was uh, on some of the high top level teams. One was a part of several championships, won a truck championship with Kyle Busch motorsports, one one with Eric Jones. So uh, that's kind of my background and uh, introduce yourself. All right. But before I do, I'm going to have to uh, get this autographed and send it to you. Cause I know this is your favorite driver. Oh, right Jeffy. There. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's an original, right? There. That's an old action. Um, I've got two of these damn things. Anybody wants them? They're for auction, man. <laughs> yeah uh no i know jeff personally uh one yeah. was a part of several wins with him yeah before i w before i worked there i didn't like him too much because i was a big three fan you know what i mean who who ain't that you can see the three stuff behind me yeah Dale. yeah and you got yep, junior yep. oh yeah. yeah big big junior guy yeah uh but uh yeah you know it was a childhood dream of mine and uh you know i was fortunate to get to make uh to be That's a part a of it of a hell of a bucket list you know yeah, no, it was great. <laughs> like, so what did you want to do? I want to join the Marine Corps, go to strange <laughs> and exotic lands and meet new and exciting people and kill them, and then drive race cars. <laughs> but, well, know. I didn't get to drive them. Well, I got to drive them during pit practice, but uh, well, that's cool. I was a jackass jumping out and changing. I was, I threw the tire on the car under a pit stop, so it was Okay, it was so you were the guy they tried not to hit when they were coming down the pit road. Well, they tried, yeah. <laughs> How many times they succeeded you get several times. How many times you get clipped on the speedway, man? Man, uh, Denny Hamlin, Denny Hamlin clipped me the worst. Uh, it was at uh, New Hampshire. He got me uh, pretty good, but you know, you you don't even think about it. You know, it's like you get rounds flinging at your head, and, and overseas, you don't even think about a car coming at you. You know, it's a lot slower. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, the the adrenaline's kicking in. You don't even think about it. It's like, damn, you know, I just got right. clipped, but. Sometimes you don't even notice it, really. Yep, yep, yep. But um, so what's your background? Where'd you where where are you living at now? And uh, well, you know, I joined you... the Boy Scouts. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Buckeye by birth, anyway. I mean, you know, I, some of the fuck uh, Buckeyes are up there, and uh, uh, I think I got a couple of old tide there. But um, moved down here in 2010. But no, um, 
joined the Army in 87, uh, got out in 95, pissed off about the whole Clinton Easter bullshit and how the Army was going. Did probably the dumbest thing I ever did in my life except marrying a stripper and uh, <laughs> got out of the Army for six years and then got back in. It's like, dude, what the fuck? You just wasted six years. You could have fucking had a retirement. But mm -hmm. 2001, March, I was just bored as shit. And I said, I told uh, the girl I was dating, the stripper, right? Don't, guys, don't ever do that. You know, you know, you got those <laughs> friends that'll let you get drunk and piss in your suitcase and shit. Um, Did you meet her at Cafe Risque? No, I met her in Ohio. And, and, and Ooh, even yeah. worse. <laughs> yeah, there were good things and there were bad things. And, well, you know, they, they say you can take her out of the strip club, but you can't take the strip club out of the girl. Yeah. But anyway, Damn. but yeah, so March I got back in and then shit. We we had just come back from um, an FTX out at uh, your favorite, probably your favorite place, Fort Irwin, California. Oh, yeah. NTC out there on the whale tail playing Op 4 and shit for the. Well, Op 4 is not bad. Yeah, I love being Op 4 because you get to be the bad guy. You can do kind of all kinds of shit. You don't have to play by the rules, but. Mm -hmm. uh, that was like my sixth trip out there, and I swore I'd never go back and fuck there. We were again, but uh, yeah, we came back, and three days later, the tires went down. Really? And that was it, job security. Um, first thing we got stood up on was um, there was a little operation called Operation Noble Eagle, and while all the guard units were in stuff, were getting spun up and everything, everybody got splashed around the country, all these Tier 1 sites and stuff. We were guarding it fucking... Uh, uh, over in Terre Haute, Indiana, well, near there, Clinton, um, it was where they used to make the uh, VX nerve agent. So there was like 14 tons of this shit, or 14,000, 1,400 tons. I, I can't try to fuck. Anyway, it was a lot of that shit. <laughs> These containers in the middle of a farm field. So DOD went in and put this big-ass storage facility with a spillway and everything in there, just in case some terrorist got the wild idea to go get that shit and release it in the environment. And um, after that, it was onward. Um, I did some tours in, Af in Iraq, uh, served in Afghanistan, and I served in Kosovo. And then uh, what I would do, it was a weird life. You know, um, I had the opportunity to go 18 series and started the process. But then my unit got retasked and we ended up, it was one of those things. I don't know. I'm kind of an old softy and you get attached to your soldiers and shit. So I was like, you know what, if they're going back over, I'm going back over with them. So I cut the training and went fucking home. And then that was it. And, uh, but I spent the better part of the first 15 years of this century over in those five or three locations, Iraq, Kosovo, and um, uh, Afghanistan, because I did some contracting too. Got into prog program management, doing uh, training the Afghan security forces and shit. That was like fucking herding cats. As you've seen on TV, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. America. Jesus fucking Christ. The commandos were pretty cool, but uh, the Iraqis weren't much better, man. They'd rather sit in their bunks and, and look at Fiki Fiki videos of two dudes. And you're like, what the hell? Right? You remember that shit? <laughs> oh, you ever go yeah. to CSS? And the, here's the Iraqis. They got their cell phones out there. And, and oh, sir, you must see video. I must. What the? What do you got in your mouth? That's you, dude. What do you got in your mouth? <laughs> oh, sir. But we're not gay. Mm -hmm. You can wrap a turd in a snicker wrapper. It's still not a fucking candy bar, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, no just, thing. I'm not into it at all. You know, that's If that's you, dude, you do you, but don't be a fucking hypocrite. It's like, you, you ever you ever, ever feed them pizza? No, we didn't have pizza over there when I was there. <laughs> dude, what, what you, yeah, that's right. You were there. By the time the my last tour, there were fucking, Jesus, Taco Bells. And you're like, you know, really? green bean coffee and shit. You're like coming into like Camp Striker and shit. You're like, it's like going to the fucking mall. You know, Damn. all the Haji shops in Afghanistan. You know, uh, that's, I gotta, when we get to it, I'll tell you about what the Marines were telling me the other day when they got back to Kuwait and, uh, about all, I don't know. You you were you said Afghanistan too, right? I was, ever, huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. Uh, when I got to Iraq, we were having hoagie sandwiches. Oh yeah. And, uh, yeah, and they were disgusting. But by the time they got to you, they were like goo. Well, that, and, yeah. Uh, uh, um. Uh. The other thing we were having were MREs, so it was like pick your poison. You know what I mean? Let's yeah. fucking eat MRE. You know. 
They're good. <laughs> you only you only have so many of those, and finally you just uh, your asshole's about to blow out, man. Oh yeah, I get compacted oh, yeah. on them damn things. I can't shit for weeks. <laughs> That's why they cost uh, maybe TMI shit. for Mrs. Mister's America here, but um, <laughs> you know what the hell? This is not your normal conversation on whiskey tango. Look, you put two Joes in front of a bunch of liquor and start reminiscing about the good old days, and this is the shit that comes out. Next thing, Absolutely. one of us is going to pull out a mannequin, and we're going to start Eiffel Tower in that motherfucker. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Brings me back to the I'm, good I'm writing days. a book, man. I, I got to tell you this. I, I'm, I'm writing a book. I got three chapters written, but I got, I've been having writer's block, but it's all the shit. Like, okay, everybody got a damn book. Chris Kyle had a book, you know, rest mm -hmm. his soul. Yeah. They're all talking about their combat e uh, escapades and shit like that. This one's called, you can't make this shit up. The story of a veteran and a contractor in the Middle East. It's all the fucked up shit that used to happen. Dumb shit that Joe does. Uh, watching Ugandans shower together because they're those. Remember the five minute combat showers? Oh, yeah, yeah. You get in, you, sh you, you rinse off, you turn the water off, and everything to conserve water. And you, in five minutes, that's it. Well, catch these guys on a frequent basis, man. Two of them in the shower. What the fuck is going on? There? Oh, Mr. Sean, it's not what you think. Well, you better start explaining. <laughs> yeah. but, but with two of us, it's 10 minutes, right? Oh, that's some jailhouse lawyer bullshit right there, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you go in there and it looks like they killed a fucking Wookiee. They're in there shaving each other's backs and shit. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Oh, it's Jesus. just not right, bro. It's just not fucking oh, right. Man. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know, man. It's been a fun life, but no, it's been it's been a great time. I've had the best, you know, who gets to live their dream and uh served in the military as well. You know, it was, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, I've, but ahead, you know man. what? You know what? This next drink is to everybody we didn't bring home. Yep, let's do it. Before we get too stupid and silly. All right, cheers, brother. Yep. But, um... I normally yeah. don't drink, but... Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not to trying to get you in trouble, man. You can blame me. No, no, no. Give her my number. But, you know, my yeah. wife knows the deal. Whatever. But, uh, you know, you know, Afghanistan's a hot, heavy topic, and, uh... Yep. I have my thoughts on it. I, I, you know, I've heard people blaming Trump for, it and it really under it really that, pisses that is, me off, dude. That's the least of it. You know, if you can blame Trump for what just happened the last two weeks, or the, even the month preceding that, you're a you're you're a dumbass. You really are a dumbass. I got nothing else to say for you. You can even blame Trump for any of this. I mean, everybody that's got a half a brain or two cells to rub together in that cranium knows. The difference, you, if you watched what happened to fucking ISIS in Syria, and, and and that's a fucking topic that's really close to my fucking heart, and and, and, and I hope at some point I don't get off topic, because I want to tie this into something that happened to us, and um, that when I heard what this Marine told me, who's basically my adopted son, um, and I heard the distress in his voice the other night, my fucking heart sank and I don't get all mushy on a lot of shit, but this yeah. one was one where there was not a dry eye and my wife's sitting there listening and she's just crying. And it's like, this kid's going to fucking need therapy. And it's yeah. not because of combat. It's not because of the explosions. You expect that shit. But what you don't expect is what fucking ensued after. And we'll tell everybody in a minute, but um, yeah, I just, Trump would have taken the fight to the Taliban. You kill one fuck. And look, how can you fucking even say that when you know for a fact there is no statistic that you can skew or anything? No American soldiers, no American contractors lost their lives for 18 fucking months before Joe Biden took office. None. Yeah. It was the first time in the fucking war. Right now, I, I've always said this, and I don't know how you feel about this and love to hear your take. But this is I look at our grandfathers, you know, my grandfather and his two brothers. All three of them served in the in the uh, European theater in World War Two. Mm -hmm. And uh, they um, my grandfather's two brothers hit the beaches of Normandy after serving in Africa with Patton and everything um, and in Italy and shit. But they. Um, they never talked about this shit. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, but those guys saw combat for weeks on end, right? And and you remember, you know, your first fucking time a bullet whizzed past your head. I'm sure. Oh yeah. 
you know, and then the first time you had to lay fire down on somebody, um, maybe the first time you saw a round splash out, you're like, I fucking just did that, right? Yeah, it's, oh, shit. You're like, you know, and that's something that'll live with you for the rest of your life because, you know, what the fuck, if I'd have met that dude in Detroit and fucking maybe under different circumstances, we could have had a beer, but this is a different fucking life, right? Yeah. But you can't let that shit bother you. But that's the normal fucking part of combat, you know? But what these guys saw over there, I know these kids are going to be fucking warped, you know? Yeah. But, uh, but it's just... Um... Well, let me ask you, okay, you, you, you know... You know we saw some serious violence of action, mm -hmm. right? And obviously some units saw more than others and, and some people didn't see shit and, you know, but um, it, it's just the luck of the draw, I guess. But um, we really didn't have the op tempo that veterans in World War II and even Korea probably had. That's my take. Yeah as a whole, as a military force, maybe some units did, you know, you get up in the mountains of the fucking Hindu Kush, you talk operation Restrepo and shit. Yeah. Them boys were fucking taking it every day. Right. But no, uh, I, I think, you know, and then me and a buddy of mine talk about this all the time. Uh, even Vietnam, our wars, ain't even, our war wasn't even comparable to that. None of nothing like that. Our technology is way better. Yep. You know, funded way better. You know, them guys in World War II didn't even have plate. <laughs> it was just, you know, LCE yeah. and running around with nothing. Yeah. You know They're I mean? running around with a flak vest that doesn't absorb fucking shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we had everything. I mean, when I first got to Iraq, we didn't have up armor Humvees or nothing like that. We had little shields, you know, I don't know, sandbags on the floor. But yeah, you remember that shit? And you had your knees in your fucking chin and you're trying to wear <laughs> your fucking flak vest. And <laughs> but. You know, I listen to stories my uncle talked about Vietnam. He was a combat engineer, and it's like, ah, dang, boy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's, it's our war ain't even comparable, I don't believe. You know what I mean? Yeah, because, I you know, most, most, most troops, and I would even say, even a lot of the operators, because, you know, at a lot of other camps and shit, even as a civilian contractor, we always had ODA or, or CAG or something like that at one of our bases and shit. And, you know, we'd work out with those guys and shit. And, um, they always came back. You know what I mean? If they, if they did an overnight op, you weren't like going out there sleeping in the field. Whereas in Vietnam, them motherfuckers were all in a fucking constant, you know, three week fucking patrol. And you're sleeping right next to Charlie and shit. But yeah, that's a, that's a creepy ass war right there. Yeah. But now <clears throat> I want to, this Afghanistan shit. Uh, yeah. I think it'd be a different story. We'd be having a different topic. I don't even think it'd be a topic if there would have been a, a uh, strategic exit plan yeah. instead of just fucking packing up middle of the fucking night and just fucking leaving. You know what I mean? What would you have done different? It had been months into it. You know what I mean? You know, you, you get, you start taking fucking vehicles out. I mean, I don't know which vehicles we planned on leaving or you know I what? think you got to leave forces there regardless, man. We've been there 20 years. And if you're going to establish something, it don't happen overnight. You right. know, tw and people are like 20 years. Well, 20 years really ain't that fucking long. It seems like yesterday, September 11th happened. And then next month, it's September 11th again. Yeah. You know and, what I mean? You, you remember what Bush said. And I, I totally agree with him. And I caught hell for this. Um, you know, he said, this is not a five or 10 year war. This is going to take a generation or two. You know, if you really want to see success in the Middle East, you're going to have to change says he's, hey, Huh? Mike Taylor says, hey, he finally got here. Hey, <laughs> Right. He just got on to to watch the episode. Right, right. And um, but yeah, that's the that was the thing, you know. It's like you, you, you know, and I don't think the biggest problem we have with any conflict that we get into. Look, I was in I was in during ninety one during Desert Storm and everything. One hundred and three mm -hmm. hours on the fucking ground, and that was it. We were done. Well, that's because Air Force fucking dumped all their ordnance and shit on Iraq, and those guys didn't know which way was up by the time we fucking sent troops in. And then the American people got complacent in expecting a televised war with James Earl Jones going, this is CNN, and Wolf Blitzer up there making a name for himself, and everything was fucking in your face, and uh, we expected everybody to be back in fucking two weeks, you know, but that's not the way a real war fucking happens. We just got lucky on that one, and most Iraqis didn't care, but people don't understand the difference between Sunni, Shia, Wahhabism, Ba'ath Party, all this shit, and how much they're like, well, we just go along to get along, you know, 
um, until we see an out. And then them fuckers just started surrendering in droves. But mm-hmm. not the Taliban, not these terrorist groups. That's different. We were fighting Iraqi regular forces, Red Guard, shit like that in 91. Okay, they're a military force, but their heart wasn't in it. The Taliban is different because you're fighting a religious war, first of all. You're fighting. These guys are in that jihad mentality. Everything's got to be their way or they're just going to blow themselves up and anybody around them. And Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, they're all the fucking same. Only way you can deal with a terrorist is two to the chest, one to the head, right? Yeah. And 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 that's the problem. You know, most Americans, only 1% of us ever go in the fucking any kind of service, right? Law enforcement, yeah. military, whatever. And, and that's fine, but don't fucking politicize the military to the point where we can't do our job. And I think that's exactly what fucking happened here. Mm-hmm. I know that's what happened, right? Well, I mean, we're still in Korea. We're still yeah. in Germany. Still I think that's Korea. the kind of exit strategy you got to have. You got to leave some somebody there. Look, at, hold... look at each of those countries, too. Where are we with them as far as a relationship with foreign fucking policy now? They're some yeah. of our best fucking friends. Yeah. I yeah. think you'll never get that with Afghanistan just because of the way their beliefs, their religion and everything is. But, you know, if you wiped out the one side, but you would have to basically wipe one side out and then let the people fucking build up from there, you know. But I mean, I don't know. Y- y- yeah, because we were making a change because there was women going to school. Yeah. Kids learning to read and write, you know, and they they want that kind of life. You can see they're fighting for it. They but, had it back in the 70s. Yeah. Yep. So, but then you know where we screwed up. You know where we really screwed up in Afghanistan. It wasn't with this war. It was in the 1980s when the Russians invaded. I was still shitting in diapers, so I don't. Oh yeah, I was in high school, but (laughs) junior high and high school when that broke out. But um, when we got involved and we started, you know, Charlie Wilson's war and that shit, I truly feel that we fucked up because, (sighs) yeah, the Mujahideen are one group up there. But now you get, and it was hard to tell the difference between them and the Taliban, you know, and, yeah. and, and, the, and what became the Taliban and all that shit. And that was the problem. We created that power vacuum again. And that's what uh, started ruling that country and created exactly what this administration has recreated again. You know, w- when we left Iraq, um, you know, they, uh, and we still got forces over there. I know the Castellas and some of the other country companies are still hiring for you know, static security and shit like that and PSD and all that crap. But, um, but the fact is that, uh, you know, we said it then all the vets, boom, we're going to create a power vacuum and boom, there it was ISIS. Cause uh, uh, 2009, I've, uh, a lot of the folks that watch uh, whiskey tango was, um, uh, you know, they know we talk about this frequently. It's like, uh, we used to put in our debriefs that, uh, the Iraqis were complaining about, you know, these Syrian males coming into their villages and strong arming them for information and shit. And I'll be honest with you. I, I look at a Syrian, I look at an Iraqi, I wouldn't know the fucking difference. Yeah. But but they do. And and it's dialect and shit like that, you know, and and, and uh but um so yeah, we start putting that up. You know the weird thing about that, and this is where and maybe this hopefully helps people understand how this shit gets politicized. We got called up and uh by the higher command and they were like uh, boys, uh, he's our platoon sergeant at that point, and uh, they they said, "You guys, uh, we understand what you've been putting in your debriefs, and that the the, the uh, locals are kind of freaked out about these Syrians and stuff. But we need you to take it out of your debriefs." And we're like, "Wait, time out. What? So you basically want me to just ignore the threat that just came into what we're trying to do is create a safe and secure environment so the Iraqis can reform their military, their police, and take back over, right?" And they're, ba- they're like, yeah, basically, just <laughs> ignore it. And and once we started ignoring it and we told them, hey, yeah, you know, uh, we've been putting that up and there's not much we can do about it. You know, you got to tell the cops, you got to tell the local military. And they didn't give a shit either because those guys are lazier and shit. But um, but then as soon as we started pulling back, um, you know, those, those guys started. And, and before they even knew what ISIS or ISIL, Daesh, Douche, whatever the fuck it was, uh, was, <laughs> um, they... The, we were starting to find people fucking with their heads fucking severed and shit and, and blown up and shot up and shit like that, that we had, you know, developed that sphere of influence with. Um, and uh, I mean, it took an act of Congress to get the fucking Iraqis to actually want to go get these guys. And finally we did a raid. We caught like 27 out of 33 one night 
um, yeah. that were holed up at these old fucking rotted out buildings. But um, yeah, that's the thing about these guys. If you take the fight to them, and I don't understand the Afghans. If I, if my commander would have come to me and my country is in dire need and it's about to fall to a fucking force that we know is going to you know push us back into the Stone Age and screw us, I would have told that commander to take a flying fuck or fragged his ass. I'm sorry, yeah. you know, especially in a place like Afghanistan where people disappear every fucking day, you know. But it, 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 but to watch these videos of these commandos crying, please, sir, I want to fight the Taliban, the commandos especially, because those guys were. You know, like, like, like I was telling one guy last night is I'd probably put them up with, you know, like, you know, there's the Afghan version of like, you know, maybe, you know, being a paratrooper or something like that. You know, you're a little bit yeah. better than the average, average Joe, but the average Joes were like, whatever, man. It was like special ed. Everybody rode a short bus, that kind of shit. <laughs> and half them motherfuckers were Taliban anyway. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, uh, I, I don't get it. Yeah, Mike Taylor says our military is not a police force. If they are in a country, they are there to kill people and break things. Once the military has boots on the ground, politicians yep. is is done and the gloves are off. Absolutely, absolutely, man. I mean, yeah, that's something Rush used to say all the time. With you know, the rest of his soul, man. The military kills people and breaks things, right? If you want to send, if you want to build a nation, you know, that was the amazing thing about Kosovo, not to get off on that topic, but it yeah. was like, like the Clintons went in there and was like, here's a piece of paper on its written word, democracy, have a nice time with it. Well, these fuckers just came out of communism. They don't know what democracy looks like. You know, you built things for them, brought NGOs in. They didn't know what the fuck to do. The same thing happened in Iraq. And then, here's the thing. You're only two countries over. And we just saw the power vacuum that we created over there. And yet you think it's going to be different in a fucking country that has an 11 percent literacy rate and has been the, 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 the landlocked safe haven for terrorists for fucking eons. And you're all of a sudden your administration's got this shit on lock. I'm sorry. Yeah. You should well, I think a lot. Go ahead. I think a lot of these countries don't want democracy. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I would say that there are some people that have been so indoctrinated into socialism, communism, or just being ruled by a fucking dictator. Mm -hmm. that that's the only thing they know. They've never tasted or wanted for freedom. Um, we are a, a rare bird when it comes to that as a country. And, and, and that's why that's what I started the Whiskey Tango Foxtrot for a show for was, you know, you got all these I could be out there teaching people how to shoot and we do, but and all that other shit and tactics and stuff like that. You know, the real thing is, do you understand why we have this stuff, you know, um, and don't ever give that shit up. Uh, yeah. I think nothing pisses a, a, a true patriotic veteran off more than to hear somebody give lip service to, and I'm not trying to, 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 to downplay when people say, thank you for your service. Cause we appreciate it every time you say it. And we love you guys. That's why we did what we did. We didn't ask for fucking, it, it wasn't about the money. Yeah, the, the paycheck's nice because you want nice things, but it was about fucking protecting the guy or the gal next to you in the fucking foxhole. But, exactly. Uh, and, and, and making sure the fucking enemy didn't come home to fuck your family up. But um, the only thing we ever asked was when we come home, don't give up the essential freedoms that we fucking, you say that we're protecting because that's not what our job is. Our job is to, to beat the enemy so you can have a country, so you can live free and have those freedoms. That's it. Your job at home is to protect those freedoms. So, I mean, I don't know. But this this shit here, man, it was just like, if it were me, I would have fucking told somebody, been like, look, you know, I don't give a shit what the Joint chief said, Beaky Buzzard, Mueller, or Miller, whatever. Who that fuck <laughs> is that general, whatever. And that guy that's up there wearing the fucking Canadian Mountie looking fucking OD green jacket and shit. I have no clue what uniform that is. But um, I'm just like... <sighs> Give us a real fucking answer. America can handle it and shit, you know. Stop fucking sugarcoating stuff uh, and, and get off your ass and be a military. We have no leadership in the military right now. If I was in the military, and I understand why these kids coming off this this detail um, uh, in Afghanistan is are, are so distraught. I mean, shit, I'm talking to this group of young Marines on the phone, and uh, we're on WhatsApp the other night, and, and, and they're like, I don't know if I want to stay. I really don't. And then after that, Lieutenant Colonel, what's it, what was his name? Scheller? Schuler, something like that? Yeah, the Marine. Uh, yeah, got uh, asked to leave. Did you catch his video? 
Uh, he did a follow up and he said that he was not going to take a pension. He's going to give it up. He doesn't want any of it. He's walking the fuck away. No you're shit. Going to see, you're going to see more and more of that. And that's sad because those are the kinds of people that lead people. Um, you know how you know how your your officers always say, well, you can't fraternize with your junior enlisted and shit like yeah. that. To a degree, but if you don't know your fucking men, how are you ever going to expect people to follow you? What, because you've got some fucking gold on your collar or something like that? That doesn't make a leader, right? No. <laughs> and I think too many people in the military get into a position of rank and they think, I mean, you were an NCO, right? Uh, NCO. Was corporal. Okay, so that's an NCO, man. I took it off the wall. The NCO creed, right? Yeah. I will not use my rank to gain any special privileges. My men's needs will come before my own, right? I will remain tactically and technically proficient. Officers shall not have to finish my job because I will have it already. You know, you'll, the thing is, leadership doesn't think like that anymore. You know, in the, in the Army, we got the seven planks of leadership. You know, yeah. selfless service and courage and honor and all that shit and respect. Um, you know, in the Marine Corps, they break it up, and I think they got 14 planks because if you try to put too much in one sentence, they get fucked up and need a crayon. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I got a few Marines in here. So, <laughs> but no, no good, my daughter's a Marine, so I give her some shit too, but I love the kid to death. But uh, yeah, you know, I just don't want to see what happened in Afghanistan ever happen again. And I think we need to hold fucking. Our administration and senior leadership, and I'm talking all the way up to the Pentagon, the Joint Chiefs, accountable for the way they handled the situation. Because think about this. I know you know this. If you were an Afghani and you came to work for a fucking civilian company that came over there or the military, at first you'd be like, oh, I don't know. And then they're like, no, 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 no. We got your back. We got your back. You come to work for us. We got your back. And then all of a sudden the day comes and they don't got your back. Three o'clock in the afternoon this afternoon here on the eastern coast, our last plane took the fuck off. Meanwhile, I told you about the fact that we had like a group of all the contractors on that line. It was a great group of people because we all kind of we we're like a family. We, we fucked with each other. Um, you know, we hated each other. We loved each other. Um, but we stayed together after the contract broke up and shit. Um, yeah. and, and, and then we took care of our Afghans as best we could. I still got like 20, 30 guys over there that that are hiding in fucking fields and barns and shit like that with their four-year-olds and wives and stuff like that. And I, and my heart just fucking is sinking for them because I know what's going to happen. Cause I've already had two of them fucking get killed by the fucking Taliban and their wives get handed a letter from this Emirate state of fucking Afghanistan, whatever the fuck that's supposed to mean. And uh, that no, just stay where you're at. You don't get amnesty. We're going to kill you when we find you, you know, mm. and you know how it is in, in, in over there. If you're a woman, and your man dies, ain't nobody going to marry you. You better hope you've got family to look out for you. You can't work. And if you do, it's going to be a menial job. You got kids to take care of, right? And now you're in a, in a place where they want to introduce severe Sharia law. Pff, you're fucked. Yeah. Right? And uh, last night I was talking to a little girl that uh, lives in, out in Modesto in it's about three, two thirty, three o'clock in the morning. I didn't get no fucking sleep this week. <laughs> Jesus. Every Afghan in the fucking in the country that's already over here on the SIVs or got their citizenship or just got out has called me. You know what? But I love them. I'm, I'm glad you did because you know what? I can complain about not getting sleep, but in all in all reality, if I didn't want to do it, I'd turn the fucking phone off. Right? Yeah. Um, but um, she cried. She was crying the whole time. Had me fucking crying. God damn her. Um, not literally, but. <laughs> Talk about you know i got my three sisters over there and it was kind of funny we would joke and she'd start laughing and it's like there we go we got to get her off the fucking negative and my brothers i don't care about them they need to pick up a gun and go get the taliban my dad i know he's only got one hand but god damn it he can shoot a pistol but my, yeah. bro my sisters you know and then all of a sudden she break down and start crying because they're like 17 19 and 21 young girls gonna get raped gonna get murdered because their sister and that's what these ask see this is the thing when you touch the people, the indigenous people of a different nation, it doesn't matter what you thought of them beforehand. And we can make fun of Afghanistan, the fact that they have an 11% literacy rate. But I've always told everybody on my, my program, the one thing that I respected about every second and third world country and the TCNs and shit like that that were over there was what they knew, 
they knew well. And when they put their heart and soul into something, they don't do it half ass like we do here in America, right? We're complacent. Everything's easy. We got fucking AC. We got refrigeration. Fuck, we don't have to fucking do this. You know, you got power for an hour and then it's out for four. You got mm-hmm. power continuous unless you got a storm like them folks in Louisiana. I hope everybody's all right, by the way. Um, but, um, you know, and if, the, if so, you got a damn generator, 90% of Americans. Yeah. Now they did have generators and shit like that too. They got pretty, pretty, uh, they were resourceful. Well, but, I remember uh, blackouts in Iraq, man. It'd be out for oh, yeah. days. We, were like, <laughs> <laughs> we had more blackouts in the fucking LSAs than they did out in town. It's like, what the fuck? We got fuel and shit. Come on, man. Fill it up. Yeah, I got I got some Halo to play and shit, right? <laughs> oh, Halo! <laughs> Holy shit! Remember that shit came out, and then the, then the MWR would have that big ass seventy two inch screen, and everybody be fighting over who gets a controller and shit. You yep, like guys, yep. guys, fucking out of mission at seven o'clock. You better get to fucking bed. Yeah, all right, well, dude. I don't know, man. I just I, I it breaks my heart to think that if I were an Afghan and I'm thinking like this. They're call. I mean, literally, dude. Think about it like that. I don't know if you've ever had a call like this, but maybe you know, if you've ever stayed in touch with like an interpreter or something like that. Like I got this bro right here, Adam. I'm gonna show him. I showed him a few times, but Adam was um, what I heard. I didn't get close to him, man. To be honest with you, I, I didn't trust anybody over there. I actually. You you learn to feel people out, you know, because here's the, yeah, I spent so damn much time over there though. After a while, you started yeah. to learn. There's good and bad in every fucking society. I yeah, think, I get it. Yeah, and 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 it's easy to go over there with the attitude. And I know a lot of my Joes did too. They're they're young, they're E3s, E4s, and stuff. And and uh, yeah, they got the sham shield, and they're just they're like, dude, fuck it. Everything here wants to kill me and suck my blood, right? Yep. Um, and and I get that. And and it's not about letting your guard down, but it's about knowing how far that level of trust can go and building that relationship. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, okay, when people talk about racism here in America, it's the same thing. What, what's the one thing you think that drives, and I don't think most people are racist like you, like the news is trying to make it out to be. I think what it is, is people have a bias or a prejudice because of what they don't fucking know. Yeah. You know, why do most, why do most people think that Muslims hate fucking Christians? Well, because you've never gotten to know any of them in the first damn place. Um, and, and vice versa. They think we hate them because every time we have a bomb go off, it's usually one of their people. But if you go throughout, you study the history of terrorism, fuck it. you know, it, it wasn't Muslim per se. You know, you go back to uh, the times of Josephus, you know, 54 AD and shit like that. Yeah, sure. It was drew, written about Jerusalem and stuff. But, you know, those guys were, uh, you know, they, they worshiped the God Baal. That wasn't Islam. That was a totally different religion back then and shit. But, uh, you know. Terrorism has been all over the world. Every culture's had it. Uh, but so it's not a, not just a Muslim thing, but, but Iraq or Afghanistan is a very funky, uh, a very funny, you know, people talk about, you could never, you could never conquer Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. And I will say this much. They are one of the hardiest people I've ever met on the planet. They fight, they live, they die, they 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 work the fields, they irrigate in one of the harshest fucking environments in the world. You know, and you talk about all the desert sands and shit, but you got them Hindu Kush mountains and you've got the extreme cold at 14, 15,000 feet going down to Gardez and shit like that, or up into Badakashan or whatever, Paktika, and then you come down there and you see that red desert going into Herat and shit like that, and it's 120 degrees in the summer. There are some extreme temperature differences, but they make it work. Um, so I give them credit and the fact that they're fighters and they've been keeping at it, um, you know, they're, you've always got to give respect to your enemy. You know, you got to understand them and shit. Otherwise, you know, you, you get complacent and then that's where you get. But did we lose this war? Fuck no, we didn't lose. Biden handed it to the fucking Taliban. The Biden administration handed it to them. We won that shit. Every time we fought them, motherfuckers, we won. How do you won. feel about this right here? How do I feel Let's about, talk about this a little bit? Yeah. I don't know how you feel about it, bro. Well, I mean, I can say one thing. I'm going to talk about one thing because this actually happened to me in the military. And it's, I know it's out of fucking whatever context or whatever. Um, I know if I lost a set of nods or something, you're locked down, right? Yeah. I was locked down at Fort Stewart in the motor pool for 30 days. Couldn't leave because some fucking jackass Joe. E2 sent him home to California and thought it was funny. 
So we were locked down in the motor pool for 30 days. And look at these numbers right here. It's astonishing, yeah. ain't it? Yeah. Well, you Not know, where a lot of, I, I think a lot of people have a misconception of, did we give them the weapons by just leaving them there? Or what? where do these weapons come from? Exactly. Most of the weapons were what we call TPE, theater-provided equipment, that is handed over when we leave to the indigenous forces to give them something to beef up their forces. Um, why do we give them AR or M4s and, and, and that shit? Because that's the common battle rifle that the infantryman uses in the Marine Corps and the Army and shit like that. And we know how to teach them. You know, you 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 go pick up an RPK or an AK-47 and most fucking Joes become fucking dumber in a box of hammers. You know, we used to do that in Iraq <laughs> when I was on contract and they were running a fucking um, the expert infantry course and shit. And I was getting my Ugandans to go through on that contract at Gary Owen. And uh, they were, hey, can we bring some of your weapons out and stuff? Yeah, come on. Over. And we'll do. We were teaching the Ugandans how to break down an M4, which they already knew. Uh, but they had become pros at the RPK and the AK. And the uh, U.S. soldiers are like, I got 15 thumbs, you know. And <laughs> fucking, it, it was funny. But that's why we, we, we give it to them because that's what we train them with, you know. Um, I think what rubs, rubs me the wrong way, some of the shit that we lost, I didn't even have some of that in Iraq you know, fighting overseas, you know what I mean? And here they're yeah. fucking handing them. This is taxpayers' dollars. Yeah, but it's fucking last year's taxpayers' model. dollars. Yeah, huh? it's it's last year's model too. I mean, that shit was going to get destroyed or whatever. And there's one thing about it. I mean, I don't know if you ever run logistics and shit like that, but when you start talking about how much it costs, look at World War II. In fact, I don't know if you, have you ever been to Europe. Uh, once. If you ever get the chance, go to Denmark in may when they have their military it's kind of like when we have memorial day and shit like that yep. they do the same thing and they they have this huge fucking parade that goes right through um their city streets and shit like that um and and i mean like everybody that's anybody um or the nether i'm sorry the netherlands not denmark the netherlands and um they got the tanks they got the guys that fought in rhodesia you know all these old dudes in uniform and, and if they, if that if if that generation's gone, somebody will fill the fucking uniform. They love their fucking military gear. And then all of a sudden you see all this shit from World War II, and you're like, who the fuck has the money to purchase 32 Sherman tanks? You know, it's like, where did that come from? It's all the shit that we left in Europe after World War II because it was cheaper than fucking shipping at home. And that's where a lot of this shit was. But it was also given to the Afghanis so they had something to operate with. Who knew that they were going to fucking fold? Well... I didn't understand it the first couple of days when they said Kabul fell. It's like, Jesus Christ, that was quick. You know, we've expected them to fold, but not that fast. But then when I heard that the Biden administration and the chief of staff had, had said, well, okay, we're going to close Bagram and pull all the cast. You got no more close air support. I'm pretty sure the first colonel that woke up next morning going, where the fuck is my planes? You know, I mean, probably shitting his britches wondering, you know, <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, I'd be like, well, we're fucked. You know, uh, guys, let's just surrender. You know, fuck this. The Americans went home. Guess they didn't want it. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. The thing that bothers me is everybody's like, well, they can't do anything. I heard somebody say this on uh, one of my uh, posts the other day. Um, they can't do anything because we've locked down all the uh, Taliban's or all the Afghani accounts. And, and, and one of the folks, I don't know if they were going to call in. I gave him the number. They were. They had a, one of the folks had a question for me earlier, um, if you're in here. But here's their answer. They had asked me. Um, I think it was Carrie. Asked me. Saw a photograph of stacks pallets filled up with hundred dollar bills. Is this real? <laughs> Do you ever study Iraq? Yeah. There yeah. were warehouses filled with U.S. money. Yes. I know. I've seen them. Yep. And then they had right next to it. 16 times the fucking pallets in Iraqi dinar as well. Yep. Um, and yep. we were giving it out as foo money, you know, just go make a business, you know, be friends, whatever, paying them not to hate us. And uh, yeah, there's millions and millions of dollars there. And then you got $85 billion of the shit that Alan just put up on the screen that they have, you know, if it, I, I'll guarantee you, if they're like the, the Afghan forces were, First of all, they're not even going to operate many of those fucking MRAPs, right? That's the one vehicle that really bothers me. The helicopters don't bother me as much. Um, now, some of the planes, but those things will get 
shit, that'll look like something out of, you know, Lord of War, where that plane went down on that field in the middle of the fucking, you know, like, uh, you know, Uganda or whatever. And then everybody mm-hmm. came out there and stole everything but the frame. You know, that's probably what's going to happen to those planes. So I've seen all the planes on the tarmac in Afghanistan. But um, the MRAPs are what really bothers me uh, because those vehicles are, you know, mine resistant up armored vehicles. Well, they can they use too. shit to blow it up. Well, yeah, they can use that to get into places um, where, you know, now if they're taking fire, it's like, whatever, dude. Um, but the, the fact of the matter is that they'll probably sell most of that shit off to somebody and like Pakistan or whoever, and they'll make the money. You know, yeah. Qatar, this is what you remember when Bo Bergdahl and that shit happened, right? Oh, my. Yeah. yeah. Fucking yeah. another fucking Democrat fucking wonder child plan, right? Yeah. Fucking idiot. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got, like I got one I got Go one thing to add. Adam put on uh he goes I don't know if any of y'all saw the photo of the Taliban member flying the military helicopter with a man hanging by his yeah, neck from that. the helicopter. I actually got a video clip of that. Yep. Yeah. What's your what's your take on that, man? I think probably what ha- here's what I think. Do I think the Taliban automatically learned how to fly a fuck and you know Black Hawk? No. I think no, what they no. did was they probably got some of them pilots that we trained over there. I uh, said, look, if you don't want to die, you're going to fly choppers for us. Well, fuck, okay, yeah. I'm flying choppers. So they're taking joy rides around, and they found somebody that's an interpreter, or they may even found an American, and they're hanging them by their neck from that rope. You know, Do I believe that happened? Yeah. Do I know that people fell off that first fucking plane? Yeah. You know, somebody asked me this. I don't know if have you, have you had anybody ask you this question about the um, C-17 that was going down the runway. I, had, I saw a video where somebody said that thing was a fucking balloon, like it was Operation fucking Overlord or something in World War II, where we had the balloon tanks to fool the Nazis and shit, mm-hmm. and that the people were carrying the fucking balloon and everything. It's like, no, bitches, they weren't. Well, why did that one guy in the pink turban go up there and he was yeah, he was all happy and shit? Because 99% of the motherfuckers that got on the first planes out on day one, day two, Monday, Tuesday, of the, the two weeks ago, were not interpreters or co-workers of ours. They were just fucking average Afghanis, and and some of them were probably Taliban, and they jumped in the gate, and they got on a plane, and they thought, going to the land of milk and honey. Wouldn't you be happy to? I'm going to Disneyland. Let's smile, right? So, you know, let's. in all reality, and that's what the Marines were telling me. It's like, yeah, the first two days, because I didn't know this either. And if if, you you talk about OPSEC, um, a lot of people had the misconception that the Marines hit after Kabul fell. They were already there couple days earlier but um yeah they said the first two the first three four planes day one day two it was all fucking mostly fighting age males which what that what's that anything that can hold a damn rifle that's that's swinging the set of balls right is a fighting age male but um and and none of them had any paperwork associating them with the united states or any other coalition force so then they finally figured out the State Department. And this was the one thing that I know we, you and I talked about this earlier, but it really, this more than anything else, pissed me off. Mm-hmm. The State Department figures out, hey, we got to curb this. We got to vet these fuckers. And so I'm talking to this young Marine when they got back to Kuwait. And um, he goes, this is this is something I'm worried that these guys, we just told them, look, you're, you're a killer, right? And... Uh, they're, they're hamstrung. They're not allowed to do their job. They get an order to take 6,500 Afghans that are inside the military terminal at, at North Kia and march them back out the North Gate. And that's it. Bye-bye. Now, these were guys that didn't have any paperwork or badges that said, I worked for the United States government or DOD. And as soon as they walked out the gate, the Taliban started sweeping these people up. Not only did you see any of those videos or pictures where people were, and a lot of them hit TikTok, um, where there were bodies lying in those fucking culverts and the yes. distance, the big stuff. Yeah. And people Blood are like, everywhere. well, that was from the explosion. No, no. No. The fucking official, cutting their heads off and shit. The official count was 170 people, Afghan people, died in those two suicide blasts, the IED and the suicide vest, yeah. along yeah. with our service members. Um, hundreds more were injured. Uh, and that's the other thing they don't talk about. How many service members were injured? I think my daughter said that the official, because she's working logistics in the Marine Corps, she said, I think the official count is 37 U.S. military personnel got injured, some of them severely and, and uh, you know, amputees and shit like that. Um, so, you know, if, if any of them out there ever get to see these videos, you know, our, our, our hats go off to them. And thank you for your service. And I hope you. Absolutely. 
Hope you get through this your recovery quick. And, and listen, don't ever give up on yourself. And, and it's, seriously, if any of you guys got to talk, talk to a vet that's been there. You know, but 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 what ensued after and this is the thing that I know we're going to have a bunch of kids who are like two, three years into their first contract in the Marine Corps that were like gung ho. I know these kids because I raised these kids. Um, I worked with their cadre in ROTC at Palm Bay Magnet High School. Um, where my daughter went and, uh, you know, we'd take them out. We'd teach about the M4 rifle. We'd go to the range, um, talk about combat. The, 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 and they were ready for this shit, but they weren't ready for this order. Take them back out and dump them out there. And the next thing you know, the Taliban associated these people with being traitors. And they murdered over two-thirds to three-quarters of these people. And when the yeah. kid told me, he said the most disgusting, and I'm going to get choked up here. The most disgusting thing he saw, the thing that really tripped him out, and he got real quiet. And um, he goes, this mother couldn't have been but about 28, 30. And she had a little infant in her arms. And the fucking Taliban ripped the baby out of her arms. A bunch of guys started pulling on the limbs. They literally ripped the fucking limbs off of this baby. How much of a fucking inhuman animal do you have to be to be able to rip up a human baby? And then they killed the mother in the street after she watched her baby die. You know, that's that's... Mm -hmm. That's the sickness, but you don't see that aspect in the news because if Americans heard that and saw that, I got on the Buck Sexton show today and I talked to the fucking call screener about that very incident. I was calling my, you know, Bill Posey, my fucking, you know, senators and congressmen. I called, um, well, fucking Brian Mast, I, you know, Afghani veteran, lost both these fucking legs, right? Served in Iraq as well. I know the guy personally, and I'm like, dude, I can't get through to him. And, it's like everything's falling on deaf ears. I get on, I'll get on the uh, Buck Sexton show, and they're like, "I hear what you're saying. I can't put you on. Why? Well, because for two reasons. Number one, do you have visual proof? Look, I'm not going to discount 13 or 14 Afghanis. No, if it's one or two, okay, maybe you're making this shit up, trying to play it up. Like, please help me, please help me. I want to get out. All right. But then when I hear the Marines that I've helped mentor before they left for basic and shit. And I know these kids, they ain't lying about this shit. They ain't lying yeah. about, it. you know, why would, what do they have to gain by lying about it? And then when they're mm -hmm. watching, they're like, dad, I can't fucking do anything. My hands are fucking tied. Well, I know how that feels. You know yeah. how that feels. Yeah. Uh, Billy S says the Biden administration is so incompetent. And then Adam said with nine 11, nine 11 anniversary around the corner, make you think that the Taliban is going to try something since, they have new toys. Scary. Good, good thought. Good thought. You know, they caught four. The official word is four fucking uh, known wanted persons trying to come over to the States. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just worried about the ones because I don't know about you, uh, but in the contracting world, one of the problems we had was we had to live by um, and we had to hire by um, Afghan labor law. If the person was qualified to do the job, if they met your minimum requirements, you were absolutely 100 percent mandated. You had to hire that person. And I had several people that I was like, you look at them and you'd ask them a question. Be like, How do you feel if somebody if somebody uh, committed blasphemy against your religion? How do you feel? Well, I should I should cut their head off and I should desecrate their body as it tells me to do so. And I'm like, whoa, this motherfucker's off the fucking chain. Right. I want him out of my office. Right. I got fucking Afghans that are drawing swastikas and oranges in my office. That's no shit. You know, all kinds of hate symbols and shit like that. And, you know, and you're just like, I can get nowhere with these guys, but you're stuck having to fucking, you know, hire these guys. So, and some of these guys, they've never fucking carried out a terrorist act or anything like that. But this is that shit that's been ingrained into a lot of people, not all of them, but a, a portion of the society. How many of those guys got through the fucking wire? How many of them are yeah. going to be in Fort Lee or Fort Dix and then get shipped out to fucking, you know, El Paso or, you know, coming to your neighborhood soon? Well, I just showed a, a Billy, a guy I work with at uh, where I work. There was a uh, an act carried out today, you know, that uh, it was a like a terrorist attack deal, a ISIS deal. You know what I mean? At a shit, I can't remember. I showed it to him earlier. Uh, right. Yeah, it was fucking crazy. I'm like, dude, you know. Well, I mean, 
They're a ruthless bunch of animals. I don't, I... All right. I had, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I just get so fucking flustered. I get so pissed off. I, I wish, I, I really wish I had a contact. Look, I know I wasn't 18 series. Fuck, I wasn't Dev Grew, all that bullshit. Um, dude, I don't need a paycheck. Fund me, fucking put me in a uniform, get me some goddamn, you know, gear. Let's go kill Taliban. You know what I'm saying? Get on a fucking bird. All I want is an exfil when we're done. If I lose my life, I lose my life. Fuck, I've already put that thing on the line. Got six six combat tours and fucking eight and a half years of contracting, right? We were getting rocketed fucking every other day. You know, you wake up in the morning and you're hearing Katusha's fly over your fucking camp. You're like, well, 420 Charlie, you know, that shit. And you just, you start to grow into it and you're just like, you live with it. You know, you don't become complacent, but, complacent, but you also, you also learn what's going to hit you, what's not going to hit you. You know, you know when you're in danger and you develop your skills and shit like that. But, but the thing is that, you know, fuck, you know, we right now as a country look like a bunch of fucking idiots. We really do. Yeah. We look you know, terrible. Yeah. We voted these idiots in. You know, and it's not just Biden. I almost feel sorry for the man because he is so old and that guy should be enjoying the fucking golden years and, and all that shit. Right. But but again, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. I think it's a drug for these fucktards. Yeah. And, uh, but he ain't steering the boat and, you know, they're setting him up to be 25th Amendment. Right. They're going to yep. get him the fuck out of there. And then you got Kamala Harris and the speaker stepping up. I call her Camel Toe Harris. Camel Toe Harris. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> ah, the most, the, the, the least <laughs> likable candidate on the stage, right? And she fucking makes it. I'm still amazed. She called Joe Biden everything but a white guy during yep. the campaign. And yet she's his vice presidential campaign uh, runner. You know, I'm like, what the fuck? Well, fuck, now she's saying he should resign. Oh, yeah. Well, you knew this was a setup from the beginning. Oh, yeah. Everything the Democrats do, if you can't see the force for the trees with this party, and it's not the Democratic Party anymore anyway, but I'm also surprised how many people still follow that party and don't know the history behind the party, who's really been behind Jim Crow and slavery and all that shit. But that's all right. I get it. A lot of people, look, if you don't have to learn history, you can remain dumb to it. You have the right to remain stupid. But everything you say after that is going to be held against you by those that ain't. But, you know, what next? I mean, seriously, they get in there. They don't have any concern for constitutionality. They have no concern for your rights. Well, look at this. If you can look at your goddamn watch. Did you catch that shit during the ceremony when they took the 11 caskets off the off the plane the other day, yesterday? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fucking Biden looking at his watch. Dude. Mr. President, you got 45 minutes for those Marines and soldiers and airmen to take those caskets off that bird. I think you're asking stand at fucking attention. Trust me. How many times do you have to stand at attention or parade? Oh, fucking hours, down? man. Yeah, don't lock your knees. Woo. Yeah, I'm just saying, <laughs> Mike, man. Mike says, I call her Campbell Toe Harris, too. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> if you want to call in, the number 704-762-7605. You'll actually be live on air. You can ask a question. Uh, yep. We'll answer it, and uh, love to have you on. Let me let me put that in my comment. Where the fuck is my comments, man? I'm getting a lot here. Uh, on my end, your feed is cutting it. Okay, got that. Um, the YouTube he's version. In a yeah. bunker. Guys, if you're on the Facebook version and you're having problems, go to YouTube. It's a lot clearer. That's one thing. I'm going to use this gentleman's uh, platform uh as a, as a kind of a, a I, I'm, I'm a fucking tech dummy, you know, um, when it comes to shit like this, I gotta get my buddy TJ over here with his kids. He's got one kid that fucking just, he'll come in here. Tick, tick, tick. What the fuck did you just do, man? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't just tick it, tick it, tick it and show me. I don't understand. It's like, I feel like my dad, when I fucking started programming his DVR and shit for him the first time, he's, he's like, I don't understand this. It's not a VHS. It's not Betamax. I'm like, Oh shit. Here we go. But, um, yeah, there you go. That's fine. Hey, guys, I'm, I'm glad you found the feed on, on YouTube, man. Uh, you're, look, I want you guys to – those of you that watch Whiskey Tango, go ahead and subscribe to Alan's show because um, we're going to – you know, I don't know – how long have you been doing this, Alan? Uh, since March, man. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story about that. I, uh, well, 
it was probably January, February time frame. I woke up one morning, rolled over, looked at my wife, and I said, I'm going to start a podcast. She literally looked at me and laughed. Here we are. <laughs> and now you now you're doing it, man. Yeah. Yeah, I love it, man. Again, you, you, like, I, you like the new Tim Pool? I'm trying to be something, you know what I mean? You know? Uh, but no, I just uh, texted a number if you guys want to call in. Uh, right. Ask give me, a question. Give me that again. 704? 762-7605. All right. There it is on Facebook if you guys want to call in. No, no, we don't want to end live video. We want to send that goddamn text message. There yeah. We go. We can go. Let me go get a wire real quick, and I'll be right back. You, you go ahead and uh, uh, oh, if you want to talk about it. It'll, right, it'll take cool. me two seconds, and I'll uh, grab this wire. That way I make sure, you know, I, I don't want to. If somebody I'm calls in, I want to make sure it gets through. I'm picking up some of the. I'm gonna go through some of their texts and stuff. Like I, I got my Scottish buddy Martin out there in California, who's coming back to Florida. So, be safe, bro. Uh, interesting story about Martin Tate. This yeah, man. Let I'm let gonna talk go grab about this wire real quick, and uh, right I'll on. be right back. Right on. someday I'm gonna get Marty on here because Marty's an old Scottish Marine, um, and um, was it forty third? Or 42nd Royal Marines, Marty. I don't know if you're still on there, if you're getting on your on your plane. But but anyway, when the Balkan or the, when the uh, Falkland War kicked off, Marty was 17 years old and was non-deployable, but made it there. Was the youngest Royal Marine to hit combat since World War II. So the little write up and shit on him. So I'm, I feel kind of prestigious knowing the guy and everything. He's got an interesting history. He's got a vernacular that's just like mine. Only thing is, he can get away with it because he's got a Scottish accent and everything. Everybody thinks it's adorable. Me, they just think I curse like a fucking sailor. But uh, but there you go. Yeah, that's the thing. And, and that's the problem with Facebook. Mike says, uh, I came to this platform because I couldn't hear Alan on Facebook. Uh, and it gets hard of hearing. Old, I get that, guys. No, I appreciate it. Uh, there we go. I wish one of those family members would have told them how they were. No, 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 no. You know what? Um, that comment, I, I'm glad you brought that up because... I was telling um, Alan when we first started this video up, I'd just gotten done watching. Hannity had closed out, and he's getting a little bit whiny for me. I'm, I'm, I'm about done with Hannity. But, um, you know, I mean, he's still got good points, but sometimes it's just it's the same fucking thing over and over. It's like, get off of it. But Megan Kelly came on, and the very first thing she played was a clip from the mother of a Marine sniper that was killed in that bomb blast uh, last week. And she called uh, Joe Biden everything but an old man. Uh, I mean, she called him a piece of crap, delusional, d- dimensional, or dementia-ridden, whatever. She, uh, You could hear it in her voice how distraught she was. The one thing that I really found, um, you know, Biden doesn't care. And that's the thing you guys need to understand. You know, on Whiskey Tango, I'm always talking to you about, you know, your gun rights, uh, you know, training, training, training. Be prepared for what's coming. How and, and Alan and I are going to get into the COVID as well here after a bit, and it's and, and the control factor. Um, and I know most of you guys because you know we're birds of a feather and shit. We we think alike and stuff. And and I can't worry about the ones that won't listen. You know, I wish that everybody had a common sense bone and could just listen. And I'm not saying we got all the answers. I've been wrong plenty of times, but you got to be willing to fucking listen. And and, yep. and and make a clear decision. But, um, you know, these guys don't give a shit about you guys. They don't give a fuck. If they're willing to pump a fucking experimental chemical into you that hasn't been proven, but take fucking drugs that have been, that could have be effective off the shelf, I have a real problem with that. Why wouldn't you? You know, um, you know, it's it just, it, 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 it never ceases to amaze me how easily people in this country just think that, oh, the government would never hurt us. But then next week you're hearing them bitch about the government. It's like, what the fuck? Are you bipolar or what? Politically bipolar? You know, one minute you want to defund the police, the next minute you're like, I can't get enough of big government. What the fuck is your idiot attitude, right? God damn. I don't understand them people. I don't know. You got to help me out. I'm just, maybe I'm just old and cranky. I'm 53 years old. What do I fucking care, man? Can you see the comments everybody's putting on? Yeah, I can now. I I finally, it was on private chat. I'm like, oops. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, if you, if you like the content, maybe please uh, like and subscribe and uh, I'd greatly appreciate it. We're going to try to do one. Are we going to try to do this more often? 
I would I would actually love to pair up because I think this is a lot easier when you have somebody to talk to and instead of reading all this shit. And then when you got if you got the setup, bro. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it, man. Right on, man. Right on. I'm Zim, trying to look at some of the comments and read them. I'm gonna come up and yeah. visit this. Dude, you gotta come and we do one live, man. It'd be great. Fuck, that'd be cool. Drink a beer. Oh, yeah. You know, when you told me some of the people you've had on your show, and I'm like, you've only been doing this since March? Yeah, man. Dude, I got to get the hook. I said, no way. I would be embarrassed to bring somebody on my fucking Facebook platform. <laughs> I did that last week with a kid named Fardine that worked for us. And this kid is cool as shit. Um, really nice kid. And and and, 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 and one minute we're jump, smoking and joking. The next minute we're talking about trying to get the rest of his family out. And they're just like, oh, fuck, here you go. And I'm just like fucking, Bleh! you know, that <laughs> shit. And I thought, but... But I brought him on. I had him on a cell phone and everything. And actually, no, I think I brought him on on Messenger. He called in on Messenger. And I got TikTok rolling over here. And you know what really burns my ass, dude? Is when you got these disrespectful little fucking trolls that come on. I don't mind the <laughs> trolls when they're hitting on me. Yeah, motherfucker, you got a little fucking roll under your chin. Bitch, I'm 53 and I fucking lived my life. Been in combat many times. Been shot at. What have you done with your burger flipping ass? Shut the fuck up. You know, I don't give it. Yeah. You know, that kind of shit. But. Then they start disrespecting him for talking about trying to get his family out of that. You know, you know that you you want to talk about you know being all fucking uh, tolerant and fucking accepting and shit like that, and then you can fucking make a comment about that. There's no human bone in your fucking body, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, and you know they, we I know I get it. We're fucking grunts, um, you know. We try to be all tough and shit like that, but look, we got a soft side too. There is a yeah. human. What was it? You were talking about it earlier, you know, and, and, and uh, actually, I think, no, it was Hannity was talking about it. I'm sorry. I'm getting my conversations mixed up. The fact <laughs> no, that we, see these pic- we see these pictures of all these soldiers, and, and he made the point, like, what you were talking about earlier. We kill people and we break things. But mm-hmm. then there's those moments within a moment where you see a young Marine picking up a baby. And that was another thing that this kid told me. He said, Dad... Who the hell would hand their baby to a complete stranger through Constantina wire, knowing that that may be the last time they hold their blood? Who would yeah. do that? I said, somebody that knows that life on your side of the fence gives that child a better chance than what they got. Right. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I mean, that's the level of, you know, I don't know. You know, as long as we were there, they had a sense of security. Even the Iraqis, and as soon as we pulled out, you know, the, the, the people that I feel felt the, the worst for in Iraq was the Kurds, you know, because we fucked them in 2001. We fucking, oh, we, yeah, we're going to be there for you. And then, they, where the fuck did they go? They didn't take yeah. Saddam with them. That asshole hates <laughs> us, right? It's like Sam Kinison just said, they shouldn't call them the Kurds. They should come on the fucks because they're fucked, right? And we did mm-hmm. it to them. And people wonder why people hate us throughout the world because we don't follow through on our promises. And it's not the it's not the people because I, I you know, I, I everywhere I've traveled, I've been to seventy two countries throughout this world, and everywhere I go, people have a stereotypical idea of what Americans are. And once you get to talking to them, my parents taught me to respect people, and I, and, I, and and most people I've come across in the United States are respectful of other people. There are disrespectful fucks. We all know that. But not everybody is is geographically and politically stupid to the point where they can't function in society um, like most people think we are. And once they get to know us, they realize we're actually probably, even though we are very open, um, mm-hmm. wear our hearts on our sleeve, we'll do anything for anybody. If you, if you just let us in, if you just touch us and touch our heart, right? Um, most Americans would do just about anything. Um, but um, that, that, that's the thing. And, and that's the one thing that a lot of people don't realize. I still see people where they're, they're really pissed off and fuck all of them. Fuck them all. We just pull our people out and then we bomb the place. No, that's yeah. not the answer to everything. You know, that, 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 that's bad juju right there. That makes us no better than China and Russia and the Nazis in the fucking 30s and 40s and fucking the 20th century. You know, we're better than that. And that's the thing that pissed me off about the Marines being forced in that situation. Oh, and then, like I told you earlier today in our conversation, then they're being forced to go outside the gate, make a patrol, do a fucking dismounted patrol, and they take fire. I got you, Cassie. I see you up there. Yeah, You're heading off. You got an early morning. Uh, 
I appreciate you. That that woman right there, she's right here in my county. I, I uh, thanks you know, for watching, Cassie. I owe you a great apology because I have forgotten to get in contact with you for so long, and I'm glad you hooked me up today with the uh, people you did. In fact, Monster contacted me earlier, and I'm I'm hoping he gets in contact with those folks so we can get this story out because virtually nobody. Bill Bill Cunningham let me on. No. Joe Pags let me on for a minute and a half. And this is not a story you can tell in a minute and a half, right? So it didn't get out, um, but that was it. But uh, we'll get it out there. But uh, get some sleep, hon. I'll talk to you soon. But, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, I don't even remember where the fuck I was. I just want to make that apology. But <laughs> <laughs> you ever do that? You know, where's my oh, keys? Yeah. Fuck, I'm, I'm lost. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, no, I, I just, I'm so pissed that you put these guys in the city. Oh, the patrols. They're take a drink time. Huh? Take a oh, drink dude. time. You know how many shots I've had, dude, and you're just drinking beer. This is unfair. Dude, this is all I need. I'm already getting slushy. I think. <laughs> Cheers, brother. Right. I'm waiting to get on a flight to fucking either Haiti or Saudi, and I just, like, got three contracts working, and I'm like, now the guys are like, all oh, the planes are tied up with fucking humanitarian missions. We can't get a plane. I'm like, motherfucker. So, I guess I'm a fucking dip into the savings this week i'm trying but, to uh, uh read some uh, of the messages some of the people have put on here and see if we yeah, guys call in use that number 704-762-7605 give a call we want to hear your voice yeah right? we're fucking old vets you know we don't use our eyes unless we're looking through a fucking acog i know right? i'm trying to squint and read all the messages <laughs> get, probably, get all chinese move, my, eyes. move my, my my damn computer a little bit so i can read it <laughs> Right. Oh hey, shit! What was that? Uh, it was a fucking receiver cover that fell against an AR-15. <laughs> hey, have you seen these things? This show's bring brought to you by Runner Mounts AR-15 mounts. These things are awesome, man. I bought a four pack of them. What um, is it? Uh, it energy is, drink? Well, no, 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 no. I, I, I okay. So um, last two years ago, I did a. Uh, no, it was twenty. God, it's three years ago. Twenty nine. No, it was two years. Two, 2019, I did this thing called the. Um, uh, ILFE conference, which is the International Association of Law Enforcement Instructors. I'm a firearms instructor, NRA instructor, and shit like that. And uh, um, so I got to keep my fucking license up to teach the security courses here in Florida. So yeah. every three years we do something. So that was a cool course. I went to it and I saw these guys and they got this great big fucking mount. It's got this great big fucking inch wide pin that goes through like the trigger well of the fucking uh, the trigger guard of the uh, AR-15. You mount it to the wall and you put a padlock on it. It's like, Dah! and there's my AR-15, one of my AR-15s hanging on the wall, right? And I'm like, yeah, but I gotta fucking gotta, gotta get a key and unlock that bitch and all that shit. Well, this is something that you just hang on your wall and this little piece right here, doesn't matter which way you flip your AR-15, you got this little groove right here that fits right into the magazine release and it clips in, you can hang it sideways, hang that fucker upside down, and all you gotta do is push that mag release and poof, there goes your rifle. So I was like, Hell yeah! So that's that bit. One of them is getting mounted in my truck. The other oh, one's going awesome. in the closet. But they were like, I need to reach out to them. Um, I'll see if I can get you the address. We'll post it up on Facebook or something like that. But uh, it was one of these weird things, and I thought, oh god, this is gonna be another one of them fucking Shopify things where it's coming from China and you never get the product. And when you get, I did something stupid last year. I bought this. Okay, so it was a um, oh, what the fuck is the name of that um. Uh, with the orange and white fucking product, like the weed whackers and all that shit. Not skill, but something like that. It starts with an S. Anyway, I'm stupid. Um, but they had these little mini chainsaws. They were like a six-inch blade, and it was handheld, 24-volt. And I'm like, fuck, yeah, 34 bucks a piece. Smallest chainsaw mm -hmm. in the world. So I bought three of them. I'll give one to mom, one to my wife, because she likes to trim shit with a chainsaw, but they're too big for her. And I give one to my sister. You know what I fucking got in the mail from China? Uh, chainsaw blade with fucking <laughs> rubber handles on the end of it so you can sit there and saw like this for 34 bucks a piece yeah Jesus. so i'm very leery about this shit online right but this shit actually came out pretty good so i was like yeah that's pretty pretty happy with that so i bought a few of those but, but uh, i need to look into I, getting some of them hell yeah man i'll get you the i'll get you the address i'll have to fucking find that thing i think people are scared to call in and hear their voice or something i know right well if i say something stupid look i say <laughs> yeah. stupid shit all the time guys come on man be stupid with us. I'm a country boy from the country. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm a country boy from the city. No, yeah, no, I, that, that, yeah, that, I don't know. Maybe that's something to do with the fucking the way that people think. You know, 
where you were raised, I, I know it has a lot to do with it, but, but you ever notice that people from the country tend to, but you know, we're always, we're always, well, you're ignorant, dude. I got a fucking college. I got two college degrees, right? It's like, it doesn't make, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, what's that mean? Oh, okay. Brother call in dude. Call in. No, he said, I'm still, I thought, uh, Mike was, uh, uh, he was saying good night to Patriot Sisters of America. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. She's and good I, people. I She's really wrong. good people. She's really good people. Yeah. You know, and, you know I'm, I'm really glad that you guys have been reaching out and shit like this. And, and, and I know you and I talked, what, about a month and a half ago? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was like, we've we just been slow about it. But, you know, with everything that's going on, we might as well go ahead. And, and we, we have, I don't know. We have any more that we want to talk about with Afghanistan. Do you guys have any questions about yeah. what's going on in Afghanistan? That's what I – we know what we think. I want to know what you think and help you understand what fucking happened over there on the ground. Cause we're the ones getting the Intel. But if I keep saying it over and over again, I, I, I'm like, fuck, you know, I feel like I'm talking to myself. You know, just, yeah. Another thing is how many Americans we left over there. We pulled out today. That's a hot. You know, top. there's quite a few. There's quite yeah. a few. Now they've got, they no. got a bunch of guys. I heard, I heard you and I were talking about this earlier. I heard, did Tim Kennedy go back over there? I heard he was he was one of the guys that was going over. Um, but a lot of the guys, you know, the like, guys don't forget us little guys, you know. Fuck, we want to play too. Yeah, Operation Pineapple. Yeah, uh, Pineapple Express, and there was something else they put out on Fox News today. We posted that for our Afghans. The thing is, I'm wondering. Uh, here's here's the problem. We 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 stopped using WhatsApp because you know one of the things that I I, I got a, a combo guy that. Um, and it was saying, hey, look, you got to watch WhatsApp. Yeah, it's encrypted and shit, but it's also, they got a back door for that shit. So mm -hmm. we've been using other platforms and shit. They're a little more secure. So we got the Afghans to use these platforms and everything. So the Taliban can't intercept or if they, 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 they uh, find them, they go through their phone. They're not going to see a bunch of, you know, texts and English and shit like that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so we send out anything that we could get, like the Marine Corps sent us a bunch of shit um, last week, five uh, pages of, uh, DHS or not DHS, but uh, DOS sites and, and 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 embassy sites and stuff like that, where people that were just getting into the SIV program uh, could kind of help expedite and shit like that and get them to the uh, airport and or tell them when to move and stuff because that was the big problem. You had millions in a city of seven million. You probably had two three million people packed around that airport, and you couldn't get through. So, um, um, uh oh, the other sisters on. Roger oh, that. Shit. Roger that. All right. So we're going hey, to like and subscribe. Up. Right on. Give this guy a like and a subscribe. Boost yeah. his numbers. This yeah. guy. This and guy. Then, <laughs> and then when we finally get Whiskey Tango Foxtrot onto YouTube, whenever I figure it out, pull my head on my fourth point of contact. But that's a, the four oh, point yeah. of contact. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Some of the folks are like, What's all this lingo here? My mom hates it, man. I start talking. I'll be like, you know, you remember that? You remember that movie? Um, what was that movie about the hundred first airborne? Uh, oh shit, Hamburger Hill. And the guy's describing when he when he goes home, and I'm like, pass the fucking potatoes, mom, dude, to a T. I'm coming home after like my second or third deployment, and we're sitting around, and it's like, you know, a pre Thanksgiving Thanksgiving dinner because I always come home at Halloween to do my Halloween shit, and. Mm -hmm. um, let my Joes have Christmas and shit. And, and, and there it is. And I, Hey, can you pass the fucking potatoes? And I just, it just came out. It was a Freudian slip. And my mom looks at me like, we're clean that up, son. Roger that mom. Or did you ever do this? Get out of the fucking car. When you take somebody to the fucking mall and do fives and 25s around your vehicle. <laughs> no. I'm fucking kneeling no. down by the fucking tire on the passenger side. My mom's like, what are you looking for? Um, nails. You know, it's just ingrained in you. You know, you don't even think you're doing it, right? Yeah. yeah, shit like that. But it's weird, man. It's weird. No, I I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't. I, you did? Did you? Hear we haven't even got to the Second Amendment shit. Ah uh, no, ah uh, no. Well, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. But, um, I thought they were going to extend this shit. I really did. I thought they were going to. There was there was hope. There was a glimmer. <clears throat> that was like a fucking wet match. Yeah. I mean, before we get into the Second Amendment and, you know, our gun rights, uh, if there is an Americans out there, that's a failure that we're mm -hmm. leaving them behind. We've And what's ingrained in your head when we join the military? 
and we leave nobody behind. Exactly. Living or dead, we bring the body home. Exactly. At all cost. A unit that, will go down trying to retrieve a fallen uh, fallen comrade, period. Exactly. You know, yep. it, it, that's, it's heartbreaking, man. I can't stand it. Well, I, I, I like I told the Marines last night or yesterday, I said, look, guys, I know what's going through your mind because I've been there too, but not, I've never, ever, ever, when people in the media say that this is not, this is the one thing that's not lip service in the media, at least alt-right and, and right-leaning media, that this is the greatest military blunder in United States history, other than fucking Custer's last stand. You know what I'm saying? But even then, mm -hmm. that wasn't the same numbers. This is because you're affecting civilian lives now. And the one thing we have posse comitatus, we have laws that protect us from our own fucking military, because, you know, some jackass like puppet Joe Biden could get in there <laughs> and have some shadow government with their hands so far up their cranium fucking making that tyrannical shit go happen. And, and the people are at the beck and call, which is why we're going to cue into the Second Amendment next. Um, but, uh, you know, I just... Don't get how people don't understand that, uh, you know, it's all about control, you know, but this was the biggest fucking blunder ever. And, and, and it affects civilian lives. And we have a duty as military personnel to try to reduce, you know, I know it's a hard job. You know, it's a hard job. You know, mm -hmm. you want to spray and pray, right? I'll give you an example. I got a student. And an associate, friend, whatever you want to call it, um, who's a security officer here in Florida. And three, four weeks ago, he gets into a fucking shootout while on duty up in Coco. Not Coco Beach, but West Coco. And a little bad neighborhood. And it's a fucking heavy duty operator. Fucking, uh, they got cranes and shit out there. They'd had some theft of like half a million dollars worth of shit. And, and, and first of all, the guy's carrying a fucking AR-15 rifle. Then I'm like thinking, whoa, 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 is this a government contract or an infrastructure job? Because that's the stipulation in the state of Florida fucking handbook. You know, you, you can't, the statutes say, you know, no rifles unless you have a specific waiver from the state through your company. And, uh, oh, no, my boss just told me, and I know who his boss is, he's an associate of mine, and not exactly the brightest fucking star in the fucking atmosphere, but um, just does shit and, and then, you know, sets himself up for liability. Gives me a fucking dissertation of what happens. Three guys break in and one guy's well, one guy brandishes a fucking revolver. The other guy got a semi-automatic apparently or something. This guy gets shot in the chest, but he's got a he's got the Spartan armor on. Uh oh, getting a plug for somebody else's body armor there. And uh <laughs> and, and it stops the round, right? And uh and, and 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 he said it didn't even didn't even really hurt. I felt it, but I returned fire. I said, Yeah. He said I had a 40 round magazine. And what were you using? Fucking green tips. I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude. How many rounds? 40? Yeah, I emptied the mag. How many times you hit the guy? Once. Hit one guy out of the three. One time. So 39 rounds are fucking flying wherever, right? And then on top of it, he empties one Glock magazine of 17. I'm like thinking, what the fuck? And you hit your target once. And then you know what he told me? He goes, well, I was just trying to keep their heads down. What the fuck do you think you were in Mogadishu? What the fuck is this? You're in fucking goddamn United States of America. You can't fucking spray and pray, bitch. This no. ain't Detroit. Fucking drive-by bullshit. I'm like, what the fuck, man? It amazes me as a civilian instructor the jackassery that goes on with firearms. I'm the biggest proponent for the Second Amendment you're ever going to meet. Beautiful segue, right? Yeah, <laughs> but, for but sure. Kidding. I don't believe in gun laws. I don't know how you feel, but I don't believe in any gun laws. If you are an adult, 18 years of age, you should be able to buy any gun as long as you're not a fucking felon. And no, I agree. I'm really at that. Yep. But, but, and my people that watch the Whiskey Tango Foxtrot show know I drill this in their heads. You have the biggest responsibility in the world to make sure you are proficient with that fucking weapon. Otherwise, you shouldn't be carrying. You know, but... I don't know. No, no, I agree, man. Uh, if you're of age and you're not a fucking felon, Carry. you should own a gun. 
And if you're going to get a CCW, if your state requires a permit, which I don't agree with that either. I want, I, I want, I, I, dude, I'm trying to get my wife to let us fucking sell the place and move to Texas. Greg Abbott's my hero. <laughs> Them seven bills that he passed out there. Constitutional carry, fucking uh, uh, any holster carry, fuck, sling your rifle. What a fuck ever. Yeah, walking to Walmart. How you doing? Nice AR-15. Fuck yeah, it is. Just don't brandish the thing or what we call improper exhibition here in Florida. You know, show it in a rude or careless or threatening manner, not necessary in self-defense. You're all right. Yeah. Right. And then people are like, I don't like open. I don't know how you feel about open carry. I don't because you, you're you going to be uh, taken out first. You know what I mean? Well, there's always that, dude. Shit. Fucking T-shirt I'm wearing is going to prove that. But yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I I conceal because you know if there is a threat, you you don't know when it's going to happen, you know. But if they, they see me with a gun and I'm wearing, they see me as a patriot, what? they're gonna I'm gonna be the first one they're they're gunning for. Not saying yeah, that I'm not gonna question. not gonna bust their ass, but you know, you How never know. How often do you practice drawing from the holster? Conceal me personally, yeah. not hardly ever. Exactly. No, I'm glad you're honest. Thank you for being honest. Yeah. Well, I'm an honest person. Instructor. So I've got my shot timer here. All right. This is what we train our security officers to. That you need to be able to have that weapon out of an open holster. Level two. So really says, about- God bless our service member, servicemen and women and our veterans. Amen. Thank you. We appreciate you. God bless our LEOs, our firefighters and our EMS and paramedics as well. Absolutely. Some of our doctors are pissing me off right now, but we'll talk about that in the third topic. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, um, the, the, the the standard that we train or we try to train a lot of security officers and not everybody makes it is 0.8 seconds. <laughs> That's 0.8 seconds. That's from a fucking from an open holster level two, getting the Serpa or get that that uh, that that locking mechanism off that weapon and drawing it going through the four step draw and being able to be punched out and have sight acquirement in the end of 0.8 seconds. That's the goal. If you can do it in 1.2 seconds, you're probably in the, in the realm. And, and, the, and, 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 you know, when we have people fucking, uh, uh, you know, qualifying for their security licenses and stuff, everything is timed. And that becomes a little bit problematic. <laughs> you would be surprised the number of people that don't know anything about trigger control, trigger reset that get out there and they're like one, to, and you're like cease fire, and they're like, "Whoa!" And you said three shots in three seconds, and they're like, you know, counting that shit out and trying to breathe and aim and all that stuff. But you're at two, three, four, five yards. Anything out to five yards, you should be able to point shoot that shit and still hit center mass. Something like this shit right here, right? Florida sunshine says, "Lord of mercy." What's that? <laughs> 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 but yeah, you should be able to hit a target, man-sized target at seven yards, point shooting. What is point shooting? Point shooting is being able to use your weapon without even aligning your sights. How do you shoot pistol? Do you do you do you know or do you do you know what style of grip you use there, Alan? No. No. When you when you shoot, where's your where's your thumb when you shoot? Is it over the top of your dominant thumb? No, it's over the top. Is it forward on the slide? Mine's over the top. Over the top, so you do thumb over thumb, right? Yeah, I don't know how. how I don't know what. I don't know what the is. fuck you call it, but it's thumb. And we call it the thumb over thumb. There's thumb over thumb, and then there's thumbs forward. I prefer yeah. the thumbs forward. Some guys argue against it. The reason I like it is because you got a thumb and an index finger point right directly where you want the weapon to go. And 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 what's the most natural thing that people have been doing since they were kicked out of the womb? Pointing. Before you even knew how to say the word bottle, you were pointing at the damn thing because you wanted to put that nipple in your mouth, right? (laughs) So they say 2,000 repetitions before something becomes muscle memory, 10,000 to master it, right? I guarantee you have pointed more than 2,000 times in your life, even though it's rude, right? But that right there is is one of the tactics that we teach. And that's that's one of the things that will make you a more proficient shooter. Like say you're coming home from the theater with your wife. Um, you know, and somebody's broken into your studio there or something like that, and you're clearing the house, you know, you ain't got time to align the sights and stuff and get on your, uh, get on, get on that target. But you also want to make sure you fire at least, I always, I always like to go out to the range, especially with my M17. Cause this, I love the thing I love about this bad boy. You've seen the new, new army M17, right? No, this thing 320. 
this is what they switched to, right? And this is what was in competition with the Glock um, 19. Operators carrying that, or I know regular uh, conventional yeah, army got, carrying that shit. Yeah, actually, really? a lot of the units have actually got them. Yeah, um, I, if, I'll tell you what. This is aside from my Sig uh, 365 XL, which is my everyday carry. This I used to be. I used to be a hater of Glock. I'm a big Sig fan. And then I started, you know, carrying a, a 40 cal SIG. I had the 229, the 226, 228. Um, and the thing I hated about the SIG was that damn trigger reset, you know, mm-hmm. and the double. And, and, and then I got the 20, uh, the, the P2022, and that pistol felt good in the hands, but, and it was a cheap pistol too. It was one of those, I was like, hell, yeah, let's make a great duty pistol. Problem was, it's double action, single action. So that first fucking long draw. And I used to have a problem. I never got this worked out until I started working with some of the ODA guys in the uh, base that we were, I uh, was on on a contract. They, hey, let's go out to the range and fuck around. I said, all right, cool. And they then they noticed something. And I was like, dude, why is it? And we we're shooting ninety two bread of ninety twos and stuff. Why is it that every once in a while I drop one like two or three inches, and then everything else is like fucking right there in the center? He said, you're anticipating recoil. And then another thing, a lot of people never pay attention to is where their knuckle is on the side of the pistol on this inside knuckle is racking up against the side of the frame. So you're pushing and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, until you get a coach to, to work that out, it becomes kind of, you know, you don't know what you're doing. You're just like you're just going through doing the same shit over and over again, not figuring out what the hell the problem is. But um, uh, but yeah. And, you know, if you had great, you know, Aaron said or Alan said, uh, if you want to call in, uh, you got questions about something. Those of you that go shooting and you've noticed some of this stuff um a lot big question i get from a lot i'd love to entertain your questions about second amendment and shooting and shit like that but um, people call me and they ask hey i always shoot you know high and to the right well you're healing on the weapon and your support are you right-handed shooter yeah your support hand's not tight enough you're not gripping the weapon properly you know um anticipation of recoil kicking the weapon down at that final moment when you press the trigger you're either doing one of two things you're either beating the shit out of the trigger like it owes you money or you're not focusing on the front sight post and keep an equal height, equal light. If you do that throughout the shooting process before, during, and after firing a shot, you should be able to maintain that that uh, proper sight picture and, and uh, get that to get that round. Because you're, you know, the, the biggest mistake people make when shooting a pistol is they focus on the target, focus on the front sight, right? Let the target go blurry. But yeah. But now, I'm sorry. Go ahead, dude. No, no, no. I was just agreeing with what you're saying. Yep. I'm pissed you know, they, no one's calling in because I went and got this damn wire so it wouldn't get all messed up and nobody's called yet. Eh, damn, they're scared. Yeah, they don't want to hear their their little voices on air. <laughs> you know Come what I mean? Guys, give us something. What do you want to know about the Second Amendment? Right? Do you know what the Second Amendment is there for? Do you know what the Second Amendment says? Now, I don't know how many of these guys. I hope I hope some of these guys are going to start watching your platform. Um, that have kicked over and stuff like that, but um, well, we'll give them an excuse to anyway. But I've always given my 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 watchers uh, a challenge. You know, mm-hmm. their first challenge for the last seven years has been: I want you to read and digest and understand the entirety. Don't just read the preamble, the Declaration of Independence. You want to understand what our freedoms are about. You better understand the Declaration of Independence, right? When in the course of human events it becomes necessary, all the way through. You know, these these truths are self-evident that all men are created equal. Not, you know, the thing. Fuck you, Joe. Right. <laughs> but I'm about to yeah. have to take a pit stop, man. I'm drinking all this beer. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Let's try- think about having two of us here. We can do that. Yeah, right? absolutely. Let me take a little pit stop and I'll you be right back. Do that, man. If but- you want to call in, call in. Is it going to ring automatic? Uh, yeah, don't call and give me like 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I can't pick the phone up, guys. Yeah, I'm not absolutely. in North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, I'll be right back. Give me 10 seconds. 10? 20, Woo! actually. That dude, that he's a speed pisser. But, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, for those of you that are on, on uh, Alan's platform normally, you know, that, there's a little challenge for you. Read the declaration. It doesn't take that long. But here's the big challenge. I want you to take, when you read the declaration, I want you to read through it, clear your mind and read through it two, three times, and then go over it a fourth time. And I want you to have a pen and paper with you, right? And I want you, as you go down through the charges of everything that was levied against the crown in 1776, 
I want you to compare it to something that the government is doing to us right now. And I guarantee if you think about it, you can find it. In fact, this Afghanistan thing we we're just talking about is the perfect example of when they talk about not protecting the colonies from the savages, right? And things like that. And taxation without representation. How many of you truly feel like you've been represented in D.C., right? Right? The Second Amendment is there so we can maintain our status as a free people from a tyrannical government. That's exactly true. You know, another another YouTube video channel that I love to watch is Colin Noir. Um, that young man is, I mean, the fact that he's a lawyer and he gets it, right? Um, but the way he comes across with some of his stuff, and the and then and, and even you know, Candace Owens to listen to her talk about the Second Amendment, or um uh, oh Dana Loesch, right? Loved her stuff on the NRA TV thing. Um, you know, but I mean, don't ever give up any of your rights. You know, I don't care if you observe them on a day-to-day -day basis, but as soon as you give up one, the rest crumble. And what was the Second Amendment put there for? As a guarantee that the others couldn't be taken away from you. Technically, right now, and there's this argument about this evil black rifle called the AR-15 and anything that resembles an AK-47, right? Well, back in the revolution, actually, let me see if you know your history. When did the revolution actually kickstart? Trying to figure this out. What was that? No, we got a call in. I'm trying to figure it out. Uh-oh. I thought I I'll had hold it. that question there. Um, but the fact of the matter is when the revolution kicked off, the two main rifles that were used were the Brown Bess and the Carleville. Carleville made in France. The Brown Bess was a British rifle. Um, there were some rifles that were made here in the Americas and stuff, and we didn't have like, you know, um, big industry and replaceable parts and stuff like that. And you had calibers from where my damn fuck musket ball. I got all kinds of historic. Here he is. Hey, Billy, you're on. What's up, Billy? Yeah, you're on the Allen hey, and the dipshit show. Yeah, I don't know if there's a delay between the video and the call because um, some of the podcasts I watch, people call in and they think that they're not. Yeah, you probably got to turn the you know? background noise down. Yeah, yeah I'm going to walk out of the room. That's cool. Yeah, I hear you fine, Billy. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just calling in um, just to kind of uh, test things out, you know, would be the first caller. But um, I, I just wanted to say that I really have a lot of respect for the veterans, and I know that a lot of veterans are kind of feeling down right now because of what's going on over there. And just want to ask that anybody who's watching would say a, a prayer for them. That's it. You know, oh, that's God, awesome, man. God bless you, man. That is straight up awesome. You know what? Well, thanks for what y'all are doing. I appreciate I it, Billy. How, I don't know how you feel, Alan. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm pissed. I don't feel defeated because I know what we did. I know the people we touched over there, and I'm sure you do too. Yeah, absolutely. This is not. This is not a black eye on anybody in the enlisted ranks. This is not a black eye on anybody in, in, you know, the junior junior officer ranks. This is on higher command. This is their loss, yeah. right? Because anytime you let your NCOs, if you if you know anything about the military, the NCO Corps is the backbone of every force in the military. I'm not giving, I'm not discrediting officers because officers are tasked with planning and making sure that the mission goes according to plan, right? But then there's always fucking Murphy's Law and everything gets foobarred anyway. That's why you got your NCOs that can think on their fucking toes, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just uh, want to thank Billy. I, didn't, I don't want to cut you off, but he's still on. I just want to thank Billy for calling in, being the first one to grab his nuts and call in. <laughs> you didn't yeah, really well, grab your nuts, did you, Billy? No, I didn't. Um, <laughs> I'm not grab him, but... <laughs> Since, since I'm on here anyway, um, I, I do want to say that I appreciate what you're saying about the difference between, um, you know, where do, where in the rank does it fall? 
you know, because everybody's following orders from the top. It's it's a yep. top down type of thing, and somebody has gotten into the position where they're between a rock and a hard place, and they kind of blew the whistle, and they immediately immediately got disappeared. You know, right, Billy? What do you do for a living? Um, I work at a, a VA hospital. I'm a veteran, but I, w- I was never in Afghanistan. I was in the, in the Navy. Oh, good. You're, you're, so you're a guy for your service, man. Cool. I and appreciate thank it. For, thank, thank you for continuing and working with vets, man. We need people like that. Yeah, it's, um, it's an honor and a pleasure. You, 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 of all people, will understand this then, though, that, um, okay, if something goes wrong, if you if you were and I don't know what your rank was or anything, but if if say you were a team leader or a squad leader, right, and something went wrong, one of your one of your junior enlisted screwed something up royally, who took the brunt of the force on that one? The leader. Exactly. Why? Because that leader has. That's why in the infantry we ran fucking gun drills. We fucking, I'm talking, you take the 240 Bravo and the tripod and you get a three-man fucking gun crew out there and you run 50 fucking yards. You plant that tripod. You slap that gun down. You throw a belt in that motherfucker and then you fucking unload that shit and you pick up and you run the other way. So this shit becomes second fucking nature. And if you don't run those gun drills and combat comes, what happens to your unit? It falls the fuck apart and people get fucking wounded, right? And you're doing CQB. You run those drills over. You, you walk, crawl, run. Right. And then you don't move to the next stage until you're ready. And you make sure we like we would do glass houses. We'd know where we were going. We'd know the layout of the fucking building. But we practice for a fucking week if we had that kind of time. Now, there's times when you don't have it. and You just got to go. But if you had the time, you made sure as an NCO that your guys were properly trained because, you know, at the end of the day, you and your LT don't want to have to write a letter. Dear Mr. and Mrs. America, your son was very brave. We regret your loss, right? You have a responsibility, yeah. and that's where it failed us. Now, let me ask you this, Billy. I'm sorry, Alan. I don't want to steal any of your thunder. You chime in at no, any no, time. No, 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 no. You're good, man. I'm just listening, drinking some beer. Let me ask you this. Roll Tide. <laughs> Who ultimately holds responsibility when we're talking about mm-hmm. politicians in D.C.? Who ultimately holds that responsibility? Well, I'm not going to put words in anybody's mouth, but um, Joe Biden says that the buck stops with him. He said that he bears responsibility for everything that's occurred in the last week. And then he proceeded to blame the Afghan army and President Trump. Yeah, I heard that part. It's like, yeah, yeah, I followed Trump's plan. Uh, No, you didn't, because if you did, there'd be a shit ton of drones and a lot more fucking troops still in Afghanistan. But anyway... But no, where I'm getting on this is the American people bear the brunt of this. Anybody that voted for a politician that's fucking things up and can't see the forest for the trees. And I'm sorry, when Alan and I, you know, kind of linked up today and, and talked on the phone for the first time, you know, he's like, dude, you say it like, like, like you feel. And, and, and seriously, um, I was talking to, to a guy named Bobby last night and another vet, and, and I told him about a, a little story. And, and I know. I'm the type of person that has, a, has, a, has is, is typically the person you find pulling boot strings out of my fucking mouth, right? But you know what? The one thing I'll be damned to do is not tell a person when I think they're fucking wrong, right? And I've better been called than out pulling them out of your ass, right? Huh? It's better than pulling them out of your ass, right? <laughs> exactly. If you don't pull them <laughs> boots out of your mouth, you pull them out of your ass. I like that. But I'm in Houston. I'm at Bush International. I've just flown down to Mexico. I was dating a girl down there. I was getting ready to go back to, Af- uh, to Iraq, and uh, I just put my uniform back on. I'm standing outside the McDonald's there in one of the terminals. And there's this light colonel and a whole bunch of kids from fucking Hort- Fort Hood. None of them had ever deployed, and they're asking me about Iraq. And this woman comes up, and she does what most people in the civilian world do, is they see soldiers and their Marines and stuff, and they come up, and they want to hug you. They want to buy you another fucking Big Mac. You're like, I'm sorry, I'm fat enough already. And then they, they tell you, thank you for your service, and thank you for protecting our freedoms. And like we said at the beginning of the program, our job in the military is not to protect Americans' freedoms. Your freedoms are already guaranteed at birth. Who is it that sacrifices their freedoms? Your brother and you. Yep. When you vote for idiots that are going... Look, how many of you guys out there actually investigate the people that you elect? 
you see a name in the newspaper and they're running and you look at the letter D or R next to the name and you don't pay attention to shit that that person's doing in politics. Where do they stand? Right. And, uh, you know, people don't, people always accuse me. Well, you only vote for people that they've served in the military. Oh, bullshit. Cause I know a lot of people serve in the military. that would love to see us to become a communist nation fucking over my dead body over my motherfucking dead body. I might be the only one that'll fight for it, but God damn it. We swore an oath guys to defend and uphold that constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. Now, did your fucking enlistment say anything about that oath has an expiration date? No, absolutely not. No. The thing yeah. is um, like 90% of what people learn are from the, the institutions. There's a uh, mainstream media, there's the liberal colleges, you well, know, cartoons, high school, it's, it's, it's infiltrated. People are being raised and brought up to there you believe go. Um, Democrat on values, you know. Nail on the head. And I don't even think that most people are learning democratic values. or I don't even like to use the word Democrat. Let's just call it what it is. Socialist Marxism. Right? Um, yeah. But they're I'm learning it from home. And I don't think it's that they're being taught that shit. It's that they're not being taught at all. And then they get into these learned ed institutions. It's like, it's like I heard an argument today they were making about the mask in the schools. And I was I was listening to, um, God bless it. Oh, it was Joe Pags. And he had the Missouri State Attorney General, Eric, um, Eric Schmidt. And he was talking about, I will not mandate... It's up to the parents to determine whether they're kids. That's their freedoms. It's kind of like when um, Christy Knoll out there in South Dakota the other day, and I was totally like against her voting against the fucking, uh, um, she was, you know, they, they wanted to pass a, a thing out there in South Dakota where it was going to ban all businesses from being able to mandate a mask in the workplace. And she said no and vetoed it. And everybody was pissed, but you're a conservative. She said, I want you to think about this. And she got on the she got on the Buck Sexton show last Friday and Buck was chewing her ass up and down on it. And and uh, she came back. And she said, I want you to think about something just like you don't want big government in Washington. If I mandate that a business can't do that, I'm taking over for that business and I'm becoming big government. You have a right to work there or not work there. Make the decision when everybody quits. Maybe that business will change their fucking mind. I said, you know what? That's fucking point on. That is fucking point on. And that's the problem with, and I don't want to call it conservatism, uh, you know, libertarians or even the left. The problem with most Americans is, you know, we don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to get involved in cancel culture. Well, you know what? Maybe it's time we did. Yeah, Coke I agree. Coke helped me to be less white. So fuck it. I don't drink Coke. I don't drink fucking any of their products. And there's shit. 90% of the stuff that's in Wawa's cabinet is a Coke product. So you know what I don't do? I don't buy drinks at Wawa. Fuck Coke. I don't care. Right? I'll go Pepsi. Right? And if Pepsi ever says something stupid like that, and you can retract it all you want. Nope. The fact that you went down that road tells me that you're a weak-kneed motherfucker, and you can't stand up to what's right or for what's right against what's wrong. You know, everybody in this country thinks it's it's about, well, you know, this person here, you know, been oppressed. And this person, look, motherfucker, ain't nobody oppressing you but yourself. I don't give a shit, right? Doesn't matter what your sex is, your religion. The only thing that's keeping you down is you, right? But the fact of the matter is that you know, if we would start letting these businesses know how we feel, like Facebook, how many of you are pissed off about Facebook banning every other week? It's one of my friends is I'm banned. I'm in jail for 30 days. Again. <laughs> Facebook jail. <laughs> what the fuck? fuck? TikTok, TikTok. Twitter. Yeah, TikTok. Yeah, 10 days. And, um, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I'm going to get off of here in a second because um, I know what time certain people have to get up in the morning and all that. Yeah, but um, talking- the same exact point that you were you were talking about, Christy Nome, you can make the exact same point. Actually, I'm sorry, um, President Trump made the exact same point with the 25th Amendment when they started bringing it up. You know, right. and Pelosi and, and Schiff and all them were bringing it up to move him he told them it would come back to haunt them and and now it's on their doorstep but well it almost but, seems like it was all planned you're right there's there's you I'm, just I'm both, both, heads on that head. both heads on that nail 
that's a two-headed nail. I guess, I guess that thing will punch. They knew before the election that Biden wouldn't make it through a full term. They knew it. And they needed something big. Now, why did they need something? You know, everybody's talking on Facebook and social media about a red flag or a false flag uh, uh, situation. You know, they've got you misdirected on COVID. COVID cured cancer and fucking car accidents and gunshot wounds. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> Afghanistan comes in and now you're misdirected. Watch the left hand. Watch the left hand. And they're getting ready to punch with the right. And it's going to be a hard uppercut. There's something coming, I'm telling you. And, and, and you know, what they've been doing? What's Joe been doing in that basement? Signing more blank documents that somebody will fill in later. What the fuck? You know, yeah, I don't know if you heard it on the the Glenn Beck show about a week ago. They had a hot mic where um, it was when Joe Biden was like, "I was instructed to call on this person," and he threw yep. in a press conference, and then they asked he Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, yeah, they asked Nancy Pelosi, and it was she's like, "Am I on?" And she's like, "No, we don't want him to talk." I mean, yep. they're totally handling him. Everybody with with a half a brain knows that. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it's embarrassing when they cut the mic on the president, and then the president's like, "What am I signing?" Or he's, you know, I got to call on this person. I'm going to get you. Are the leader of the free world? You don't answer to yeah, anybody. I, I want to know, know. if I was a reporter and I could ask one question of Joe Biden, I would want to ask, "Who are they?" Because he always says. Well, they told me to do this, or I'm going to get in trouble. I want to know who who it is that's really running the show. Yep. But I'm, I'm going to get off of here. I'm still going to listen, but um, I'm, I'm going to get off of the caller list. I appreciate what y'all are doing. No, no Billy, we appreciate you calling in, man, being the first one to grab his nuts and call in. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, be the man. Who's right, next? Well, keep man. it up, guys. I know we still got up. more to sunshine up there. Come on. Come on. Let's get a woman's perspective. Good call in. Great questions. Great, that was great awesome, stuff. Too. Yeah. Oh, okay. What's that Way big to go, Billy. What's that big lit up thing you got next to your uh, flag there, bud? That, that, the thing it looks like, you know, one of them uh, this old old 70s games we used to play and shit. This yeah. right here? That's your control board? <laughs> Are you talking about this or that? Yeah, with all the little dials and shit to your – no, the, the first thing you pointed to. There you go. Yeah. This one? No, 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 not the TV set looking thing. No, this is the – this is what makes it all it – makes, makes it all happen. I gotta get me one, and that thing right there is just mesmerizing, dude. Oh no, nah, dude, it's fucking the shit. Yeah. I'll start drooling yeah. on myself. I stared at it long enough. Yeah, let's 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 let them hear a little. And here I'm like sliding this fucking <laughs> thing on my like. Look, here's how we go to dark screen. Here's yeah. how we go. Yeah. I I'm can't like, reach mine. I'm analog, <laughs> and, no. and this dude over here is like high tech and shit. Yeah. No, 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 it's worth it, but it's it's damn expensive, I'll tell you that. Uh, you know, talking expensive. about that social media thing that you know, being banned and everything, the one thing that I love, and I don't think they expected it, you know, Facebook has been a bunch of little little twat waffles. Um, <laughs> TikTok's owned by the CCP um, and all that shit. But have you noticed how many people get on there that are patriotic-minded or or are or, or questioning the system and shit. They didn't expect that to happen. They expected that they were going to be banning us and shutting us down. And people keep coming back and keep coming back. You know, that's the thing. Your voice, that's your first amendment. When they talk, mm -hmm. start talking about trying to take that away, that's when we got this. When they start taking people out of the homes and stuff, you know, speaking of which, you seen what's going on with that COVID down in Australia, right? No, what's going on? Dude, I promise you, I don't watch the news at all. I, I would fucking break every TV I got in my house. <laughs> I know, right? And I got a lot well, of them. I don't, wanna, I don't want to pay for any more. You don't see this in the left-wing media. but you'll I'll see be watching it TV off of this little fucking thing before it's over with. What is what is that little thing? Like You, you got like some kind of scanner or something? No, it's 1970s fucking you know, portable TV, dude. No shit? Swear to man, God. I fucking goddamn. Yeah. Pawn yeah. stars, man. They want that thing back. Well, they ain't getting it. So when I need to go hide out in a bunker, that's what I'm going to have with me watching. The American pickers are going to come give you 300 bucks for that damn thing, man. Watching the snow go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yep, it's fucking one o'clock. That's what the screen looks like. Yeah. No, nah, it's just for looks, man. You know, Sean Ryan did it. Holler Sean Ryan, you know, yeah. not that he's ever going to watch this, but uh, I yeah. got the idea from him, stole it from him. Appreciate it, guy. Cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 
It's badass. Yeah. But well, uh, down in down Australia, man, we were seeing getting a lot of a lot of people sending us shit uh, talking about. You know what's going on down here, mate? Um, you know, apparently they're jerking kids out of people's homes. Um, really? For, you know, families that won't get the vax. Um, you know, they're homeschooling their kids. Cops show up, a couple people in fucking lab coats and shit and full mask regalia, taking them out and they're fucking, you know, I'm looking at this. They got some some dude, some bald dude with glasses that gets up or he's some health director or something. I don't know what his title is. Talking about kind of like ours. Children. Huh? Kind of like ours, the whatever it is. Fucking Frodo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, I probably am much taller than him, but goddamn. Whew. Yeah. Wear a mask. Fuck. Don't wear a mask. Wear two masks. You need goggles. These country. things don't work. They're just a fucking pain to clean to see you. Whatever, dude. You know, mm. I don't know, man. I, I fuck. What is I, that guy? It huh? her, whatever it is. What it what is that? What? Our health director. What are you talking about about fucking uh, Fauci? No, the other one that what the fuck is that guy? Um, you talking about the sur- the surgeon general? No, the the fucking woman that looks like a dude or a dude that looks oh, like a woman. The, I don't fucking know, man. Job of the <laughs> what, you know. Yeah, I'm God. trying to go on that level. I probably shouldn't, but whatever. I'm fuck just saying. All. Look, you know, look, I, I I really don't care, but you know, it's like all of a sudden it's like the freak show in DC. Oh yeah. It's like seriously, can we have any a semblance of normality to life, or do we does everything have to be entertainment? Dude, oh, I can look my. out my side window and there's a freak show going on. Honest oh, to God. <laughs> <laughs> One of my buddies is watching, he knows what I'm talking about. Oh shit. Oh god, it drives me fucking nuts. <laughs> I tell you, I don't know, man. Yeah, I got I got two boys and one of them. I love him to death. He's a great kid. Really polite, but dude, why would you put a ghost ring in your fucking ear? I'm just saying. Uh, a I mean, ghost he's, ring? Yeah, he's oh, got the big gauges that look like them fucking rings you throw on bottles at the carnival and shit. I'm like, <laughs> dude, what the fuck are you doing? You gotta, if I took him fucking hunting, he'd get caught on a tree or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you pass a fucking football through that shit, uh, put a fucking dot sight in the middle of it, make him a goddamn parallax sight. What the fuck? <laughs> That's I awesome. would be watching too. He'd be like, "Dad, you suck." <laughs> we rip on our kids. It's all right. They do stupid shit. We did stupid shit too, man. No, nah, I'm trying to harden my kid, man. He's four years old, but I just, oh, man, I'm fuck. Yeah. No. Well, you know that's I. You know, that's one thing. Is fucking leaving in 2001 and not come back till 2015. My oldest yeah. was four. My youngest was fucking one and a half too. And, and you miss everything, you know, you get it, yeah, you see yeah. them, but you know, yeah, we took them to Europe a few times and did some cool trips and stuff. And, and I always got that talk by both of their moms. And it's like, you're the cool, fun parent. And they're the, well, fuck it. You know, I make the time count, you know, don't be hating, but yeah, yeah, you, you do pay for that. You do pay for that. But I don't know, dude, but last subject, have we hit on COVID yet? A little bit, but not a whole lot. What's your take on the whole COVID thing? I'm interested to find out. I don't know, man, because I work at a hospital, dude. I, I'm sorry. I don't know, man. I really don't. One minute, I think it's fucking... I think it's a man-made damn... It is. I mean, we I, know it's a man-made. It, yeah, it's man-made, but I think it's a I mean, terrorist man, attack. Honest to God. Well, look at it. Okay, so when did SARS come out? You know the original SARS virus came out in the 70s, right? Long before you were ever conceived. Yeah, I don't know. Remember SARS has been around, and then you had the H1N1, you had the fucking swine flu, you had the fucking bird flu, you had fucking got the kangaroo flu, what the fuck ever else. And then they started fucking around with this shit. And this is the thing, you know, you you you, you, know, you watch movies and stuff, and and and, and, and like uh, fucking um, I Am Legend. You know, we're trying to solve cancer, and next thing you know, you got you're creating zombies and stuff. And you wonder if you keep manipulating shit. The thing that scared the fuck out of me about this was when they started talking about the viruses, and they said they were doing fucking gene replication and fucking uh, MNRA and all that bullshit. And you're starting to fucking splice fucking DNA in this. I'm like, wait, what, 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 what the fuck? And then graphene oxide. I work with graphene oxide. I said, you, that's not something you fucking inject in your fucking veins. You know, it's like, you know, that's why, you know, if I was going to do one, I'd do the Johnson and Johnson. But you know what? I'll take my chance. Been sick, tested positive, cleared it up, did a four part shot. Everything was good. 
Now, the thing that I just, and this is just me. I studied biology in college. I'm not a doctor, but my wife is. And a lot of other people I know are in the medical profession that are doctors, nurses, LPNs, shit like that, that are like, you know, when you study fucking virology, your natural antibodies build up. Right. If you now and there's always look at the look at the flu. You know, we have what 60 some thousand people die of the flu every year, something like that. I don't even know the statistic, but it's you yeah, know, it's, it's a lot, but it's not the end of the world. But pneumonia, it's, it's not the flu itself that kills, it's the fucking aftermath and stuff like that, right? Yeah, but but you know, normally your body builds up natural antibodies. But I was watching something back in 2020 when all this was kicking off really hard, and they were talking about the vaccine and this virologist from Britain was talking about it. He said, here's the problem with sticking some of these, these um, vaccines in your body is what it does is it surpasses your body's natural ability to make up its own natural antibodies. And that shuts down. OK, so you catch COVID. They put the vi- vaccine in. It fights it, whatever. But in the meantime, you develop pneumonia or you develop the flu or you get something else or something else. And your body's not able to fight it off. And the same outcome, but because you had COVID, it gets counted as COVID, but they never really prove whether or not you had the flu, whether it was pneumonia, whether it was COVID shit like that. Uh, Yeah. That's one of the things that worries me. I think I'd really rather take my chance with my own natural antibodies, but I'm still questioning if you know that there's two or three drugs out there, like hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin, right. That have been FDA approved for like 60 freaking years with little to zero effects. Like if you took one just for shits and giggles, the worst thing that happened is it might make your pee smell like asparagus or something. Right. Mm. What's the, what's the bad outcome of that? Right. Um, so why are we, why are we so adamant about you can't possibly treat people like that? You got to get the jab, you yeah. know? And, 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 and here's the thing I don't understand that people that, that, you know, if you want to get the jab, get the jab, it's your choice. And I don't ever get down on somebody for getting the jab, but then they come back and some people get so damn violent about those that don't want to. It's like, listen, why did you get the vaccine? So I wouldn't get sick. Okay. I know people that have died of the Delta variant. My wife works in the hospital right here in Brevard County. And she says, they're not reporting it. They've been vaccinated. They died of the Delta variant, right? But they're not reporting it because they've been vaccinated. Well, that doesn't make any damn sense to me. The Brits are doing it and they're saying 60 to 70 percent of the people that they're finding that are dying of this Delta variant have had a vaccination because they forced it on everybody. Right. So if the vaccine's not working, then what's the incentive? None. Yeah, exactly. Well, if your argument is, well, you're unvaccinated and this thing's going to mutate. Here's how viruses work. If the virus has a strong resist, or if it has something that's trying to kick its ass, it is going to develop the ability to mutate, right? Mutations come from inducing something in the environment quickly that's going to cause it to have to do something to survive. It has no choice. But if you, it's, like, it's kind of like boiling a fucking frog. You boil the water first and throw the frog in it. What's the frog going to do? Jump out, okay. right? But if you let it go for a long period of time in cool water and then you boil, you turn the heat up slowly, next thing you got frog legs, right? So yeah. it's, you know, it's kind of like that. And then, and then the people that fucking get all pissy and stuff, well, you're the one that's, you're killing us. Are you dead? No, I got my vaccine. Well, then why are you worried? If you're right and we're wrong, all the anti-vaxxers or all the ones that don't trust it are going to be dead in a few years and you won't have to worry about us no more, Right. Uh, we got a caller. Alex. No, uh, no, no. Alexander. Vaccine says... doesn't work with Delta variant. The base vaccine is a spike protein. You're right. You're absolutely yeah. right. Now, I saw something too, and I don't understand this part. Somebody said they took a strand, a portion of the HIV virus, right? Mm-hmm. Using it in the vaccine to fight the Delta. Okay. <laughs> I, eventually, I think they're going to come up with the zombie virus. Yeah. That's all right, though, too, man. I, I'm a fan of The Walking Dead. I, I got a few hundred thousand rounds of ammunition that need to be expelled. So, Well, I mean, I got vaccinated. I took the Pfizer one. 
you know, right. and I was a, I was a, totally against it, but I, I'm in a different situation. But I got you're a in daughter. the hospital, and, and you know, they, they force that shit on you, and you're like, my wife was the same thing. So she went out. She did the Johnson & Johnson um, test case, you know, yeah. they were, and they were paying them for it and shit, too. God damn, they were paying them good. But um, Yeah, I didn't get paid. No, they just made no. me. No, they didn't make me. See, like I said, I'm in a different scenario than a lot of people. My daughter's mom's from the Philippines, so right. Her and my daughter go to the Philippines a lot, and uh, you know, I, my mind's thinking they go there all the time. If my daughter gets there, something happens to my ex-wife, and I got to go get my daughter. But they have no more vaccinations, and I haven't been vaccinated. My daughter's stuck there. How yep. the fuck am I going to get there? You know, like that neighbor. was my mindset. It's all about my kids. I don't give a f- if I die from the shit, I die from it. But I'm gonna fucking do everything I can to get my right. kid back. You know what that's I mean? What, that's what worries me is what is so bad about this vaccine that um, I don't know. But don't I'll know. tell you, when I took it, it fucked me up. Did it? Now, hell yeah, man. And at first it didn't. You know, the first one my arm was real sore. Yeah. Like fucking sore. Like somebody slugged me. And then uh the second one, my arm was a little sore. And I was fine, dude. So I took it at 2.30 in the afternoon, worked all night, went home. I stayed up to about 3 o'clock playing damn Call of Duty, just chilling out, you know. Uh, I'm like, I'm good. Finally, I went to bed. I'm like, I'm good. Woke up, was fine. Went and did some landscaping because I own landscaping company on the side. Yep. Dude, as soon as the sun come out, dude, it felt like I got hit by a fucking Mack truck, man. And I, the sun was just like, I don't know, it was a multiplier. And I came home, took a shower, and I just wanted to stay in the shower for like an hour. And uh, stood in the shower and came back in. I was watching something on fucking TV, and I, I, man, I was feeling like shit. And I, I was about to tell my wife, man, if, if I keep feeling like this, I, I, I was getting kind of worried, man. I'm not a worrisome person, but I was getting a little worried, and I'm like, if I feel like this by nine o'clock, I'm going to fucking hospital because something's not right. And uh, dude, I'll be damn. I remember looking at the clock; it was like eight fifty eight, eight fifty nine, and I was about to get up. And dude, as soon as nine o'clock hit, like a fucking light switch, dude, I felt fine. Yep, that's good. that that's worried good the fuck out of me. I'm glad. I mean, I'm I'm hearing all kinds of shit on both sides of the fence, and I don't want to go one extreme or the other. But that's why I just look. I'll do me, you do you. Mm-hmm. And I pray for you. I hope that vaccine doesn't become. But you got the Johnson Johnson. There's no graphene oxide in it. Uh, no, I got the Pfizer not, one. Oh, you're. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Pfizer. Mm. Now the yeah. guy that the, one of the guys that's with our organization here. He um, he's a uh, paramedic and uh, and he uh, works for a mobile clinic. And they they go around. They do the uh, the jabs for businesses that want to offer it. And that's the one thing that's kind of cool down here in Florida. You know, everybody talking about Florida, you got the highest case and blah, blah, blah. You know what? But we also have the highest success rate, right? So, okay, people are getting sick, but they're getting over that shit. And they're developing yeah. those natural antibodies. So let it roll. If you don't like it, don't come to Florida. Fuck it. We're happy with or without you. But, um, but yeah, they go around, they do these fucking uh, mobile things and stuff. And, and, uh, and he said, he said, look, if you're going to do any of them, he said, the best one to do is probably Moderna. Uh, but it still has graphene oxide. I'm, I'm like, dude, I just don't like fucking anything that resembles a heavy metal or anything like that in me. Um, I'm not, I'm not cool with it. You know, I've been yeah. around your know, mercury and other things like that. And these, these liquid alloys and shit. And I'm just like, I know what they do to people and the protective precautions you got to take and, and, and all that shit. And I'm just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like that, you know, not a conspiracy nut. And I've heard people talk about, oh, the 5G network, they're going to use the vaccines to be able to control people. And, you know, I don't think that that technology is that far off. But and maybe it is. Maybe it is one of those things. But, you know, somebody, uh, Billy was talking about people on the on the uh, 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 oh, left right. believe that the government should control the people. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, well, I'll give you an example. One of the guys that in, instructed with me. Uh, with the company that just kind of folded up we were teaching for i've been there for five years anyway his wife she's a conservative but don't know it she loves to make the argument that she's on the left you know it's kind of like okay that's like you know pouring salt in your own wound but um but she's out there um you know talking about you know well you know you she's one of those you're, you're trying to kill my kids and all that crap by not getting vaxxed and that crap but um you know, the government should have carte blanche to tell you what to do with your body. Really? 
So um, that abortion that you had a few years ago, well, that's my, bo- I gotcha, right? You know, you want to make choices when it serves your purpose, but you can't stand it when somebody else does. And I think the biggest problem that people on the left have is, I do know a guy, my guy, my, my, my neighbor across the street, um, you were talking about the Philippines. He's got a girlfriend over there, and he wants to bring her over on a K-1 visa, but he can't because he's got to be able to get in there. So he went and he got the jab. He's, he was totally against it. He said, I can't. If I can't if I can't do this, I can't bring her over. And he said, I'm not going to I'm not gonna live alone the rest of my life. So, all right, I get that. You did it for love. So for the next three years, you're going to have a great relationship, and then hopefully nothing happens. But we'll see, right, um, if yeah. the rumors are true. But, um, but he's hating himself, you know, and, and, and you can see it just in his arguments. You know, it's like, He'll go down the road of talking about talking up the vaccines, but then it's like, okay, do you have enough clarity? Did then they gave you that virus? I wish I had uh, one of my, uh, you know, B twelve shots or something. I show you. You got the little packet with the paper that comes with the shot and everything you take. Do they give you anything like that so you know exactly what's going in your body? No, they gave me a little fucking vaccine card. Yeah, that's it. You've got it. But they didn't give you the shit to tell you. You have not been properly educated to what they just put in your body. So if Man. the government can do this, what is next? And let me ask you this. So, yeah. and I always talk to people on the left about this. You know, it's like if you look at all the riots and shit that happened, Black Lives Matter, and Antifa, all this shit, they always got something to bitch about, just like we do. All right, we're arguing this, we're arguing that. And, and, and it always comes back full circle and it meets in the middle. It's kind of like if you really listen to the arguments, you're kind of in a way bitching about the same things, even though you may not come to the same agreement. Right. You know, yeah. one side wants to ban the cops, you know, which is kind of stupid. But OK, uh, let's see how you fare without that. But, um, but but the fact of the matter is you, you hear him talk about banning big business. Well, what is pharma? Big business. You don't trust the government on one side, but you trust your side. Come on. Listen to yourself for a second. You know, I mean, I'm not saying do or don't get the vaccine, but if you're going to make an argument, make it on your own behalf, not because somebody else told you to, you know, and and, and, and where's the proof? I, I would love, like, okay, I know you got the smallpox virus because you shipped out overseas. You had to get smallpox oh, box, fuck box, yeah. vaccine, right? Uh, well, that's not, what I was going to say, man. The way I look at it, I try to be positive about it. You right, know, right. I, yeah. get it. I don't know what the fuck they were fucking lining me up to stick yep. me with while I'm going overseas, you know? But here's the thing Did the military ever come at you with something like um, Well we don't know We think maybe this that I don't know This no. was manipulate. No they got you in a line He said bah, 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 And you didn't have time to think about it Yeah, You know Here you got Believe the science But when you got a president That sits up there A, a potential candidate That says We believe in truth not fact um, aren't they synonymous, motherfucker? You know, and then yeah. it's like, believe the science. Well, science is always questioning itself. And it's the repeated process that proves whether something becomes, there stays theory or law when you do the scientific method, right? But if you're going to just say, well, because some dude that has an education higher than mine said so, okay, that's what we call being a sheep, right? Um, you know, if, that, if that's the case, then... Why wouldn't you believe that, uh, well, yeah, you should give up any gun that has a magazine more than 10 rounds because you don't need that. Only the military needs that. Um, Maybe you should give up all your guns. Maybe you shouldn't be allowed to say certain things. How far does it go until we get to that point where we give up all of our freedoms? Instead, if this country was really truly trying to get back to unity and stuff, it's like, look, you want to go get the jab? There you go. I'm not going to fault you for it. I hope everything works out for you. I'm going to take my chances. I hope everything works out for you too. Good. Now, can we go play soccer? Let's have a good time. Let's go drink a beer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What's wrong with that? Instead, we make it this, we got to make it this deciding factor on, you know, whether or not you fit into our society and shit. Look, we're all Americans and we've lost that. We have lost that ability to accept the fact that we're all fucking Americans. I mean, if you don't want to be here, shit, there are plenty of other countries that'll accept you. Go. Yeah. But why you got to make this country like every other country where everybody's suffering and hating it? Why do Canadians come to America for health care if their health care is so fucking good? Right. <laughs> I mean, socialized medicine rocks. My wife being from the Ukraine, you know, living under the Soviet Union for the first 15 years of her life and shit like that. She's like when she sees this, she, she's like, are your people fucking stupid? I'm like, <laughs> well, 
I yeah. mean, well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, they just I, don't I, get I, it. Yeah, I mean, if, if you want to live in a hovel where you've got two bedrooms and a crowded little water closet where there's a tub, a washing machine, and a fucking toilet, and a tiny little kitchen that only two or three people can fit in comfortably, and a balcony that only two people could stand out and smoke on, and that's where you live, and the government subsidizes everything. You can't get a fucking vehicle. You use public transportation for everything. Government decides where you go, when you go, how you go, when, you know how much you take with you. Yeah, if you like that kind of lifestyle, if you have to be dictated to, then you are not made for freedom. And you hit that point earlier when you were talking about um, why do you think it is that some societies, like these places where we've gone as soldiers, uh, just can't grasp democracy, right? Because they've been indoctrinated to that tyranny for so fucking long, they don't know anything else. Yeah. Right. You can build up buildings for these people in these foreign countries. We did it in Kosovo, brought in USAID and and and, and freaking uh, all these NGOs and stuff, and and uh, you know, brought in cattle. We were trying to build a big ass farming co-op in the central region of fucking Kosovo, and I came back. I did two years with the military there, and then I came back on contract. And I was a site manager at Camp Bond Steel, and I took a four day trip, and I just rented a car and I, I drove all over the the countryside and visited my old stopping stomping grounds, and they were like. They look at me in civilian clothes like, you're back. It was like I never left. And um, But I'm all the shit that we built up for them for two years was gone. They had destroyed it and gone back. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? Well, the government didn't give us subsidies to make this happen. Dude, we were building businesses for you to do it with. But they didn't have that mentality. you know. And we have and, – and another thing you hit on earlier was – raising your kids how many parents really teach their kids how to be free and independent right how my own probably son. say 50 50 yeah i, I yeah, it, but you know you got to get out of the inner city for that my yeah. own son was raised Maybe by 60 40 his mom right and and when i came home from afghanistan the first i said she was so frustrated with him because he got a little rebellious and i said you come live with me and uh and that lasted about a month and a half and I literally picked him up and threw him off my deck. So there it is, the road. You think it's better out there? You go find a friend, get him to get you on fucking welfare, and you you see how you fare. And and that lasted all about a week. But he thought his yeah. friends were going to teach him how to live off the fucking system, you know, be one of them little fucking retards. And he learned the hard way. Now he's got to bust his ass and everything. But, um, but you know, school of hard knocks. But most parents won't do that anymore because, oh, that's child abuse, or you owe it to your – look. What you owe to your kids is an education. What you owe to your kids is the ability to develop into a responsible adult someday so that they don't make the mistakes that we made. That's what we owe yeah. to. I so. agree. You know, uh, <clears throat> I do a lot. You know, I don't I don't want self fucking tap me on the fucking shoulders. Don't don't I do it because I, I, I want the best life for my family. You know, I dude I <clears throat> Yeah, I don't talk about it much, but I I run my own landscaping company. I fucking work at the VA. I fucking I try to work my ass off, you know, right. just so my kids can see it, you know, because nothing's gonna be. I don't know about when they get eighteen or whatever. Nothing was fucking gave to me. I would yep. fucking work. I'd go to school all week. Friday night, I play football. Saturday morning, my dad was like, "Get your fucking ass in the truck and let's go work." Yep, absolutely. You know, I Bailing beat the shit, things. man. Beat to shit, dude. And I, I couldn't wait to tell him, you know, yeah, did you see my touchdown? You know, he's like, yeah, you should have scored more. Get yeah, the yeah, fucking yeah, truck, right. we're going to work. Yep. And people you know, are always bitching about it. It was never good enough. You know what? And, and, and my dad was the same way. And it's like, uh, he was harder on me because my dad was always like my baseball coach in Little League and shit like that. And, yeah. and, 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 and you know what? He drove me to be a better fucking player. And, and yeah. it's like, it's just like your drill instructors in basic training. You know, every once in a while, they'll give you that nod of approval. Like, now you fucking got it. Now get out and give me 30. You know, it's yeah. like, you're like, fuck, I can't do nothing right. But you know what? It made you better than what you thought you were you were worth, right? You know, made you made you a better fucking soldier. You know, yeah. if, you, if you let up, human, human nature is to be lazy, right? Oh, absolutely. Billy, I see it every day. Yep. Yeah. Billy every said something about big tech. Uh, discriminating against unvaccinated people by 
banning them from t- uh, Facebook and TikTok and all that shit. You know, that's going to be funny because I heard something on the news today about the vaccine. They were talking about these Afghans. You do realize that the Muslim faith has a big problem with the vaccination, right? Oh, I'm sure. So how are you going to tell Christians that, oh, you don't have that religious fucking, you know, excuse, but you're going to, that's a form of discrimination. Now, yeah. are we going to be equal? Are we going to fucking, if you're going to do that, look, yeah, that's the thing about all this. It's like, you know, people don't understand. We are, we're at the point of a, well, yeah, actually, I don't know if you ever heard of a guy named Jonathan Gillum. He wrote a book a few, a couple, few years ago called. Uh, I've Speaker heard the name Man. actually. He used to, he used to fill in for Mark Levin and stuff like. I haven't heard it from him in a long time. I don't know what happened to him, but awesome dude. Him and Dan Bongino. I used to love listening to them. I still love listening to Dan. Oh but, yeah, I do. Yeah, he's badass. But 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 John said something that really resonated with me, and um, he said, "Look." You don't know you're in a civil war until it gets to the fighting stage. But by that time, it's almost over. You know, we've this has been building for 30 years. I've been talking this shit for 30 years since 1991. People back then thought I was a fucking kook and, you know, conspiracy nut and all that shit. And it's like, okay, whatever. And now they're coming out of the woodwork. You know, I don't know. As I know it's fucking one, one something in the morning and most of them got to work and shit. But, uh, you know, some of the guys would tell you straight up. It's like, no, you're right. You know, back then we were like, dude, he's off his fucking rocker. And <laughs> talking about some of this shit and gun control and everything. And now they're coming out. I haven't even put my black flag out. And these motherfuckers already got three or four of them on their property. I'm like, dude, where'd you come from? You know? And they're like, well, you were right. And it's like, you know, all of a sudden you have that epiphany and things start to click. And you start to see how things, not just the gun control, that's one facet. But that's your, that's your liberty teeth. That's the yeah. thing right there. If you didn't have that, all this other shit would be a foregone conclusion. It wouldn't matter if you had a choice or not. You'd be getting the jab. It wouldn't matter. Your kids be taken out of your home and shit like that, uh, you know, for any little thing they wanted to. And they'd do whatever they wanted to with your kids. You couldn't do a shit about it. Um, you know, and, and look at what's happening in Australia. You know, and, and other countries are starting to realize it. But I think it's a little too little too late. You know, this is the last bastion of freedom on the fucking planet. And, and, and I've heard other people, uh, you know, well, my wife coming over, you know, from from Ukraine, when she swore in as a citizen, you know, that oath of fucking uh, of, of citizenship is longer than our oath of service. And, uh, you know, everybody I talk to, Iranian, Russian, you know, wherever they came from, from all over the world, you know, I love talking to immigrants, people that go through the process properly because they understand it. And they say, hey, look, what brought you here? Because here you recognize something that in my country, I might think I have, but my government won't let me observe, right? Because what is government? Government is force. How do they have the force? They have the guns, right? Ultimately, what are they going to do when they want to impose something on you? They're going to threaten you with death, and when yep. we tie it into what we talked about with Afghanistan and those 13, those 13 service members, their families will live with that for the rest of their life. Those oh, of us 100%. that have served will remember that like we remember Benghazi and that bullshit about what difference does it make. They will, we will remember the 32 that died in that Chinook that got shot down after somebody fucking opened their mouth on a fucking TV set and the Taliban knew exactly where those fucking operators were, you know. We remember, but they won't. And most of society will forget, right? They have and forgot. That's a good, huh? They have forgot. Yep. Yep. They just don't care. You're a commodity, you know, and it's time for people to start thinking of themselves as a sovereign individual again. Look, we operate in a society. We, we observe certain laws. That's what society does right? We're decent to each other. And when you step out of those bounds, there are laws. And that's why we hire people to put a badge on and collect your ass up and put you behind bars because you can't act like anything else but a fucking uh, 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 animal or a terrorist, right? Um, But the fact of the matter matter is that, uh, you know, we've got to take this country back. We can't sit there and expect somebody to, you know, like 
okay, I loved I loved Donald Trump as a president. I didn't think he wasn't my first choice, right? Uh, and, and I remember I had family members like, oh, he's the man, he's the man, right? See, I told you. And it's like, you know, look. And then there was a lot of things that Don said that I didn't like. I like more of a politician that's a little bit more like Reagan. He's tough. He's got that Clint Eastwood side. But then also he can be very reserved, you know. He speaks professionally. And Don didn't do that. But he come across like a fifth grader sometimes, you know. But you know what? That's his style. But he got shit done, and I got to respect that. And he didn't screw up on too many things except for three. Yeah. Number one, I thought he pushed the vax too soon. Number two, the red flag laws that he started to try to sign up on. And number three, um, when he started talking about, he did the same thing Obama did when he said, ISIS has been completely destroyed. Negative. And now they're back in Afghanistan. Obama said, Al Qaeda has been completely destroyed. Negative. Right? They just went back to their earliest form, the small cell, to regroup and wait you out. Yep. Right. But that's because here in America, we got an attention span of 15 fucking minutes. Yep. But I don't know, man. No, you, you hit on some great stuff, man. And it's true. We do have a attention span for 15 minutes. Yep. You know, you, you take in this much and you, you output this much. You know what I mean? Yep. It's, 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 no, crazy, I don't know. it's, 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 it's going to take a lot. I think, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how other people feel. My, my personal take is that this has been a slow degrading of our rights and our civil system for well longer than, than I've been aware of it. Cause you know, it was, it took me getting out of high school in high school. You don't think about shit like this. You're not, Oh fuck no. you're worried about getting drunk and, and make it out with, you know, Mary Jane rotten crotch in the backseat of dad's Cadillac. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, that kind of stuff. You know. But the thing is that, that it, you know, when you grow up and stuff, you realize there are things that are more important than, than you, you know. How's it, Mary Jane I, doing, I, by the way? Mary Jane's fine. Mary Jane's fine. I saw her the other day. <laughs> she was, yeah. And her pretty pink panties. Yeah. What the hell was that? What's that? No, something popped up on my screen. I was like, whoa, oh, I think my cell phone got charged and that's why. Hey, man, I got to take a pit stop real quick. Pit Keep, stop. All right. Yeah, dude, Keep man, beer runs through me like crazy. Hey, who, who do we still have that's a night owl tonight? I ain't got nowhere to be tomorrow. I'm oh, everybody, tomorrow. everybody that's on right now is a night owl. Oh, you. I can promise see you. I know who's on here. All right, cool. I like your crowd, man. That's cool. Yeah. No, they're good. All they're right. good shit, man. I just got to take a pit stop. I'll be right back, boys. Well, hurry up, man. I want to see you wet yourself. I mean, I can piss in a bottle right here if y'all want me to. <laughs> That's a TikTok trick right there, man. Can you do it walking up milk crates? So how many of you guys tried the milk crate challenge, huh? We got out there trying to do the uh, the Darwin Awards. Well, I ain't got the phone, so if you got a question, pop it up. I ain't had a question in a little while here. Let me see what we got on Facebook. Nothing. I think most of my Facebook people went to bed. Of course, some of you went over and popped onto his site. Good choice. Good choice. People on the right are not against the vax. They're against government forcing it. You're absolutely right, Billy. Absolutely right. Look, if you don't like it, tough. But, you know, I look at it like this. Uh, here in Florida, we got a thing called a forcible felony. What is a forcible felony? Well, that would be, an, ex for example, treason, murder, manslaughter, aggravated assault, aggravated battery, aggravated stalking, sexual assault, um, arson home invasion robbery burglary so anytime you're committing a felony whereby there's the use of any type of force well let's see you put hands on me that becomes battery no battery in the state of florida is a first degree misdemeanor assault is a second degree misdemeanor but as soon as you take and put a weapon in your hand right that becomes a felony yeah but it's just a needle okay could you kill a person with a needle? Absolutely. So I just want you to think about this. Whoever wants to come try to give me the jab against my will. Just remember, I ain't in New York where you have a duty to run. I'm in Florida where it's castle doctrine, bitch. And I don't have a duty to run. Stand your motherfucking ground. Yep. And I don't fire just one round. 
That's what I, I never got to finish my statement before. I forgot about it. 21 round magazine. How long do you think it takes to empty this mag there, Alan? Depends on who's shooting it. 3.54 seconds. 3.54 seconds, dude. I'll tell you what. I haven't How many rounds? 21. 21. You know, it's funny. When the Parkland shooting happened down here in Florida in 2017, I'm listening to uh, XM Radio 125, and I was trying to listen to Andrew Wilkow, and somehow I think I bumped the station to 124, the POTUS. And there's Reverend Al Sharpton talking about Parkland shooting two weeks after, and they were defending Scotty Peterson, and they said, you can't hold that man accountable. And it was this. The, the, this and, I, and I was agreeing with that part. But then people were talking about, why do you need a large capacity magazine? And, oh, yeah, the other argument that Reverend Al made was, you can't expect a person armed with a pistol to go up against somebody armed with a long gun. I'm like, oh, oh, I got to call this show. So I got in there, and every caller was just like, you're on it, man. And they were just lining up to agree with him. And you know how all talk shows do that, whether you're on the left or the right. So I'm like, here we go. So I get on there, and I'm like, Mr. Mr. Sharpton, I said, uh, you know, you don't know me. I don't know you. Here's my background. Let's just admit that we're going to agree to disagree on this argument, but I, I'd like to make my statement. He goes, fine. So I said, look, first of all, you said, made a statement that you can't expect a law enforcement officer armed with a pistol to go up against somebody with a long gun. And I disagree. Your typical high school hallway is no more than about 25 yards. Well, yeah. we qualify at 25 yards with a nine millimeter pistol. What's wrong? Now, most law enforcement have problems at 10 and 15 yards because I teach a lot of guys that are retired law enforcement can't hit the broad side of a fucking barn because they don't practice enough. But, you know, you should be able to hit a 25 yard at 25 yards. You'd be able to hit a man sized target. No problem. Um, and it's easier. We used to clear buildings with our pistols and sling the rifle because what's happening when you're coming around a corner, you're broadcasting your location. Right. And then it yeah. takes you got four points, at, four points of contact on the weapon. Four grip, pistol grip, butt stock, and cheek weld, right? And it takes longer to aim, you know, unless you got reflexive sights. With a pistol, one point, one point of contact, but two, two objects on that one point of contact. Nice and easy, tucked. I can, you know, it's you should have no problem. So we got through that, and he kind of, I see what you're saying. He said, but you're talking from a professional's per perspective. I said exactly. I said I'm not a reverend, so I don't come in and try to pe preach to the flock. So. You're not a, a firearms instructor or a military vet, so please let me stay in my lane and let me let me educate you. Then we talk talk about high capacity magazines, but why do you need anything more than five or six rounds? You should be one shot, one kill. Ever seen a cop shoot somebody that's on drugs like Flocka, fentanyl, right? PCP back in the seventies, eighties. Growing up, I remember cops shooting somebody, you know, on the in the Lime, Lime, Ohio. Cop shot some dude. He jumps off a four story parking garage snaps both his legs gets up and runs he's got like four or five bullet holes in him they find the carcass about three blocks down bled out but the dude was high on pcp the body didn't know it was dead yet well if it's in close quarter and you're emptying the magazine into the dude you want to plug as many holes in that guy that's why we teach when i teach ccw and stuff like that and self-defense you fire until the mag's empty you know and most of the sheriffs down here are pretty cool we got a guy named i don't know if you ever heard of sheriff grady uh Brady Judd. The guy is mm -hmm. like off the chain when you whenever they get a shooting over there or something like that. Like they 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 emptied like 68 rounds into this one assailant one time. The media hit him up on the news and they're like, well, why'd you shoot him 68 times? He just looked right in the camera and said, We ran out of ammo. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> he tells his people, he said, Look, go buy an AR. You know, oh you can't use that for home defense. I think I'm moving to fucking Florida. Dude, I'm telling you, there's only three counties I would never move to, and that's Orange County, Orlando. Um, I just can't stand the traffic. The I-4 corridor. Dude, oh, yeah, dude, I've been out there. Fucked up. It's fucking terrible. And, and, and I, I do like Daytona, though. Yeah, Daytona's cool. Yeah. There's a lot of nice places between here and Daytona. I'm actually about, wearing a Daytona uh, shirt. What's that? I'm actually wearing a Daytona shirt. Yeah? You ride bike? No. No, no. I used to back in the day, and yeah. I would get killed, man. I've drinking too much back then, and yeah. had a buddy in racing with me, and we rode, and I just 
I do stupid shit, man. Uh, I had to get away from it. For a sporting event, I took my girls to and my daughters, Ukrainian by birth, too. You know, right? We get over here, and first thing we did, I had free tickets to go see um, opening day at the Daytona Five, you know, the Daytona Speedway. And uh, oh, they were <laughs> they were loving that shit. And the cars coming around that that turn and stuff. We were in the the first turn, and there was just yeah, they were like, oh, this is wild. I was like, I like this. I was like, all right, they're hooked. Yep, she's a keeper. But yeah, that's that's a pretty good trip up there. <laughs> My buddy says, No, you don't scared. Scared. Wild hogs. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were uh, it, it's it's a long story, but we were all gonna get together, buy a bunch of bikes and ride out to Vegas, see our one buddy, the one boy one buddy that's watching. Yeah. We're gonna do like a wild hogs thing and yeah, I don't know why it dissipated, but it, it did. Kind of glad because I lived the furthest. And I was going to buy a Iron 88. Uh, fuck, I can't remember what it was. But not for fucking riding 2,000 miles. And right. I had it in my fucking mind to go buy this crazy-ass Harley. And, dude, I'd have been fucking walking like I rode a train to... Or not a train, a fucking horse to damn Vegas. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm glad that didn't happen. We huh? Had worked, we had a guy that worked for me over in Afghanistan. He was one of my uh, training managers. and Fuck. He was... A little bit older dude, and he's talking about, you know, when I get home back to Washington, he was out in Washington State, I'm going to do the lower 48 on his Harley, right? Yeah. I think he's got an old pan head. He made three. Turned around. Really? We're like, hey, dude, you coming to Florida? No, I turned around and went home. Why? My ass hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, buddy, you better get you a Honda or something. You're going to go cross country. Shit. No, the one, the one guy who just texted me that he's got a badass Harley, man. It, he's got a lot of money pumped into it. Does a lot of tits. It's not. I'm like man. you, man. I, I used to ride, but I fucking had an accident. And I just, I never. I just, yeah. That's it. That's it. We yeah. Used to do 140. Had a 1100 Honda, and uh, got that thing going 140. And uh, luckily, we slowed it down to about 60. But it was a bad spill, real bad spill. Mm. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. I see some nice Harleys though, man. That just just that and Indians. Mm-hmm. You know the DRMO auctions they used to have up in Ohio and shit. There was oh, a, yeah. there was an auction that they had. They had uh, the crated World War II vintage World War II, not put together. You had to assemble it. Some assembly required. Came in the big ass box with the sawdust and everything. Yeah. Um, but you had to put a bid on like seven or ten crates and everything. So we got a bid together. We thought, man, that's a pretty good bid. Because those things were going for a fortune, you know? Yep. Uh, Indians, Triumphs, and some of them were Harleys and shit. And then it was just like, yeah, we got out there on that one. We had no clue what the fuck we were doing, but that would have been nice, man. Yeah, like six years ago, I bid it on a Humvee, man, and got, dude, it's like they have people going there to outbid you to get the bid, keep going. I swear yeah. that's what they do. It's the same thing on Gunbroker. You ever been on that damn website? Oh, yeah, fuck that site, man. Every once in a while, I know the guy. Yeah, I used to pit for the guy who that was his main sponsor, gunbroker.com, and it's fucking all fucking speaking yeah. of which, you guys able to get primers? I don't know, man. <clears throat> I don't what I have is what I got. I don't go out search for shit, you know what I mean? I feel yeah. like I'm I'm good, you know what I mean? Like now we, we we started getting a lot of orders in and stuff during the COVID, of course, you know, it's just slowly coming back now, but still. I ended up going on there. I bought about 150,000 uh, various primers and shit. But um, then we started pulling bullets. Got to the point, though, we actually had to develop a formula. We started making our own, own freaking primers, taking the old ones and putting them together. But, uh, yeah, you couldn't get anything here for a while. You know, 9 mil was like $2 a round for 115 grain target. My Great. buddy says no primers. No primers? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bass Pro starting to pop them out on the shelf. Like they just went back to putting their uh, their ammo out on the shelf and everything, so the prices are starting to drop back down, which sucks because I'm sitting on a pallet of fucking nine mil and everything, and it looks like I might have to let it go for what I got in it. It's like, damn it. But, yeah, um, that's funny. He's talking about nine mil. I was just talking to him earlier today. <clears throat> I'm doing a class. I don't know if you know uh, Kevin Owens Mm-mm. with Phil Crash Rival. I'm I'm doing a shooter class with him and uh, nice. Yeah, uh, I, I got some steel ammo, and I was asking him some questions about it. Because I'll be honest with you, man, I'm one of the guys that I don't fucking shoot every day. I should, uh, 
I mean, I, I know I'm proficient enough to fucking somebody comes to my house, I'm gonna fucking oh, take your head off. You know yeah. what I mean? But uh you can never be I'm not where I wanna be, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh but I'm taking this class with him and I was asking him some question about some nine mil and you know I and his questions I really don't know, but he's 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 fucking really knowledgeable knowledgeable about it, you know. Right. So I always go to him for this shit and uh you know, so yeah, it's crazy you brought up the nine mil deal. So Yeah, I bought a bunch of steel. I got a bunch of that tool, some bears, some Ukrainian and Russian stuff. And you know, guys are always complaining about it. You know, the biggest complaint you get is if you go in an indoor range, because they make money off the brass. You know, they sweep it in the holes in the floor, pick it up and stuff. They don't want to siphon it. You get a magnet. That's what I do. Um, but I yeah, you know, every pistol I got, I run steel through it. I've not had a problem with it, especially SIG. Um, my Glock's held up on a couple. Other than that, you know, just I don't have too many problems. I, I, my theory is if it won't run steel, it don't deserve brass, you know. But then again, too, I run, um, you know, if you're going to carry, I don't carry target ammo. You know, target ammo is for target. Oh, fuck no. I'll, it'll kill just like anything else. It'll do yeah. its job. But, you know, shit, I'll run. Um, well, I've been doing the Browning X points, you know, cross points lately. Those were pretty. Uh, there was a company called. Um, Steel City Ammo had those during the whole COVID thing and everything, and they were still pretty decent price. Um, mm-hmm. They were like thirty-four bucks a box of twenty, which everybody else was charging like fifty bucks for twenty rounds. And then I started picking up some of the Sig stuff, um, PDX ones. I like those, especially with my forty-five Taurus um, when I'm running the forty-five long. Uh, you know, but I've been I, I bought a box of these. I'm I'm, I'm hesitant. I want to blow them off. They just got a box of twenty. They're the APX rounds. Looks like a yep. little boat. Yep. I saw I, when they first came out, I saw the guy that took him out and then and, and on YouTube here and, and uh, shot it into a clay brick block, you know, a 18 inch square clay brick. And it put a big ass hole about the size of a, an orange on the front. So I'm like, OK, puncture wound, big as hell. Then they had the cavitational wounding and it just kept spreading. And then it came out the back and this little teeny tiny hole. And I'm like, well, that's like bass backwards. I like it. <laughs> Sucks everything out this little tiny hole in the back. Cool. Well, then I saw there's this other guy that gets out there and he's shooting it for accuracy, and the accuracy was off. I mean, dude, he was like, yeah, you know, 50 minutes of angle or some shit like that at five yards. I'm like, what? You know, it was, it was crazy. The ballistic crawl off and everything, but um, so I don't know. We'll see. But I figure, you know, most of the shit you're going to do is going to be up close anyway. Seven yards are in, 21 yeah. foot roll. But you know, that's one thing a lot of people don't know is. And an assailant armed with a knife can clear 21 feet in the amount of time it takes you to draw your pistol. And uh, you know, when you're concealed, that that's going to add seconds to the draw. So practice, 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 people, because, you know, when the, when the metal meets the meat, that's not the time to be learning about your skills. Yeah. My buddy says 147 grain federal HST. That's good stuff. I like 147. There's a news. There's some. Where did I put that box? I had some shit out here. Um, we've been getting cases of Balam, and it's coming out of Serbia. 124 grain brass. Um, never had a round fail, not a single round. And I've been getting Winchester, uh, 115 grain, the white box with the red writing uh, yep. for Target. Shit, one in a hundred fail. You know, that's what I use. Primers, yeah. But we get a lot of hard primers and shit like that, and and uh, but that 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 uh, Balam. And for, you know, hell, 124 grain, it works really good because I've got a compensated Glock uh, 17 that I, I carry on duty. And uh, that compensator, I don't know if you ever shot a compensator on the uh, mm-hmm. on a threaded barrel or something. I've noticed a big difference. Like a lot of 115 grains won't cycle properly. And about every second or third round will start to jam up. You'll get a stove pipe or something like that out of it. So mm-hmm. put, put the 124s in, it seems to ram that thing through real quick. No, I... I my buddy says yep and he's uh dude this <laughs> uh, this guy knows the shit you know what i mean he's got fucking right. crazy uh, i go to him for every fucking gun solution I, that i need every fucking setup i need i mean right. this guy knows the shit you know what i mean and everything you're saying he's like yep yep no primers yep yep you know what i mean i got a question for your buddy if yep. he's on oh he's um, listening go ahead i um i got yeah, I like I like I like my Soviet weapons. You know, I got a whole collection of them and shit. Um, but I've got a specific AK that I got 
dirt cheap about five years ago at a gun show. Um, I was buying it. I bought it for cheaper than you could have got it back in the 90s. And um, had a little surface rust on it. No big deal there. But the problem I had was feeding magazines. I've only got one type of mag that'll feed, and that's a Russian uh, magazine. Put a Chinese in, and for some reason, it's like you got to take a ball peen hammer and knock that thing out. And it's all in that trunnion underneath there and that 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 uh, that mag catch. I had a guy replace it. I had an M&M put on there, and I still can't get, um, you know, a Tapco or if I run a, a, a mag pull or something like through there. It just either it won't lock into place, and if it does, it tilts the mag so it won't feed the round properly, or you know, I don't know what to do with the damn thing. And the guy that I sent it to that, that uh, put that uh, new mag release in, he did a good job putting it in, but I don't think he knew how to fine tune it to get that thing to feed. So I'm having problems with magazines on that damn thing. Any clue? Yeah, he's already typing me. Here he goes. Yeah. He said, American guns only. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, shit. That's the other thing, man. Because I'm also looking for somebody. If you know anybody up in that area, I got an SVD and a PSL. And uh, when it's shipped from Century Arms, the PSL, the receiver cover is like two millimeters too short. And, oh, no, that came with, no, the serial numbers don't even freaking match. Don't sell me that shit. So they said, we'll send you another one. They sent me a freaking AK, which is shorter. So I, I, I get online. I'm looking for it, an actual Romanian PSO. You got to buy the whole damn kit. That's $1,700. Holy shit. I'm not going to pay that. I've already put that much in that rifle, and it's sitting in the damn closet for five years. I'm waiting for that damn thing to shoot. So I'm trying to find somebody that could probably take that thing and maybe tack weld a little bit of metal on the end of it so it'll slide in that little groove up under the uh, – front side post so it, it fits because every time you rack the slide it pops right out and it's like i'm not shooting it without a receiver cover so, what all k-pots is that behind you man oh what we got well let's see we got um well let's see let's start over here this is the last one i wore over in afghanistan that's your your fast helmet right there i got another bump helmet that i used over in iraq for a little bit right behind me that's the last time i deployed to iraq that was the one that was issued to me and from 1991, we got the Desert, Desert Storm, Storm. M17 gas mask. Yeah, Good break shit, only man. in the case of emergency. Yeah. And you're in your bunker, ain't you? This is the bunker. Yep. That's awesome, dude. Yep. Good yep. shit. Yep. yep. Some 40 mic mic back here. Yep. Little mementos and shit like that. that yeah, whatever. This is where I come when I, I just got to get away and tell the world to fuck off. No, that's good shit, man. Turn the lights out and put the nods on and read books. Put my bravos <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah, read books. You actually, <laughs> damn, man. I mean, the shit, the Gen 4 is damn. I was like, yeah, I, you, I don't know if you probably weren't. You got in when, what, what time? 99. Okay. Well, you might remember. Remember the old nods, the, the single monocle, but they had, they were, they were the full face fucking square boxy things and everything, Gen 1s. Um, and, and and the damn thing was you had that grainy picture, you know, and you could never see where you were walking at night and everything. And uh yeah. Yeah, they cleared up really good. The, the Gen 4s I like. But My buddy's typing them right now. He's gonna right. tell me what it was. What's that? Oh, uh, I think the night vision deal. <clears throat> yeah. Dude, I PBS fives. PBS fives, yep. The four <laughs> five, then you had the Starlight Scope and the PBS sevens. I got one of the, I got an old Israeli one that I got to get worked on too. The tubes, tubes a little loose. Dude, I I knew the PBS fives. I couldn't think of the fucking name of it. Dude, it's been so damn long. You know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we used to have a little ether bunny. It used to run through my motor pool in Iraq last tour, fucking uh, doing a doing a parole a patrol through there and shit and checking on things about five o'clock in the morning. Sun's coming up on the horizon. A little black thing laying in the gravel. Like, Fuck, it was a goddamn acock. Check serial number, ain't none of my guys. Check company, check battalion, nobody. Check TPE books, nothing. Call division. I'm like, well, ain't nobody from division been down here. Who the hell's dropping off ACOG? So I hung on to it. Then on next next, about two weeks later, there's a CCO, M68, right? Aim point. All right. All right. This is some bullshit. Numbers don't check out. Nobody's, right? I'm thinking one of my Joes didn't dump. You know, remember how you had dummy cord everything to your weapon? Because if you didn't, yes, you I do. It. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. Dayland Nav. I I finished. I fucking oh, went oh. off in the wood line, fell asleep, and got up and forgot my fucking weapon, dude. 
But uh, I got a, a funny little story. You remember, uh, you've been about, around Bradley's, right? Yeah. So I was a Bradley driver my first year in the Army, and you take the, the – so there's two – when you close the hatch, there's two, there's three sites. The yeah. middle one you take out and you put the night vision in. It's about that fucking big and it weighs 100 pounds. Yep. It's called the nut crusher. Yep. And I'll be damned if it ain't the nut fucking nut crusher because that shit fell Drop the fuck out. out. Where you hit a bump and you hit the thing. Oh, dude, that bitch fucking fell right in my lap. Oh, fucking shit. just busted my fucking slong all up, man. It was fucking nuts. <laughs> But the whole time I'm like, yeah, this bitch can't fall out, and I'll be damned if that bitch didn't fall out right in my fucking lap, you know. So did you ever figure out how to jam that thing up underneath? I can't remember, man, what I fucking you did. Two but by fours, man. Only thing is, it never happened again, and I would never let that happen again. You know, I don't remember what I did, but it was something, some, and they all laughed because they know it's gonna happen. You know what I mean, right. you dumbass fucking Joe. But uh, I don't remember what I did, but uh. Yeah, it never happened again because <laughs> uh, that was my, uh, you know. <laughs> I got in before we had the Bradleys. Really? And, uh, we had the 113s. Yeah. Right. Yep, yep, yep. I didn't know you could dent six inches of fucking aluminum. But this dumb motherfucker, and his name was Duffy. It just oh, Duffy. Fit. Duffy. Just fit. And he's cruising, doing whatever, top speed and shit over these trails and shit. And, yeah, and they were going, it was, it was a training course and we're all in the back, just waiting our turn at the driver's helm, you know, and it's a stick and everything you're doing their neutral steers and all that shit. And I'm yeah. leaning, I got my head up against the driver's seat and I'm just kind of propped there sleeping in the back and everything. And he hits a tree probably about 24 inches thick. <laughs> and that <laughs> the instructor takes his damn CBC helmet off. He's beating him in the Kevlar with it. Get the fuck out of my vehicle. You dumbass. No wonder you named Duffy. Get out, and there's this big crease in the front of the freaking vehicle. We're like, I didn't think you could do that to it. I thought that tree would move, but apparently not. Everybody in that damn vehicle just jammed up right against the driver's seat. We're all packed in there like sardines. Right? Mm-hmm. Fucking neck all cranked up and shit like that. But no, uh, good times, man. Good times. I had a thought the other day. Did you watch any of those planes coming out of Afghanistan the other day? Uh, how you? Know, I, I know you've done a combat takeoff. <laughs> where they get on the runway when as soon as they hit the so they as soon as they get enough speed to get up in the air they just pitch that thing at about you know 45 degrees and take off to avoid rocket oh yeah fire, right yeah i'm Dude, watching you looking at people like, looking down at you they're doing this shit right here you know i'm like that's pretty flat out and i'm like dude what's what the hell's up and i'm thinking about it then i start looking at all these pictures of these afghans as soon as they get on the plane they turn their cell phones on they're taking selfies i'm on the plane ain't no fucking seats Ain't even no cargo straps. They are yeah. laying on the floor, sitting there cross-legged. And I'm like thinking, yeah, can you imagine? You're the navigator sitting there up in that, that fucking cockpit looking back there. And they do a steep pitch and all the Afghans are all pinched up against that fucking yeah. ramp in the back end and shit. That would have been some funny shit. But, dude, anyway. I'll never forget when we fucking flew out, dude. It felt like the person sitting across from me was up looking that way. Because the right. way the pitch of the fucking plane was, dude. When you're sitting in them cargo seats in a seat yes. or some shit like yeah. Yeah, so, motherfuckers with their we're wearing all our fucking gear and they're about ready to fucking puke. And it's like my buddy says checking for soft spots with a ball peen hammer on the one one threes. Go get you some hay for the fucking water buffalo. <laughs> yep. <laughs> A box of grid squares. Go give me a prick yeah. E9. Oh, that was a good one. Dude, we had people. Uh, I'll never forget. We're in the motor pool. And I, one of the one of the sergeants said, uh, go get a bag and get an exhaust sample from the Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'll never forget that shit as long as I live. We would make our, young, ne- our new privates do a boom check on the fucking 25 mic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or you jump up on the Bradley to check the shocks. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Captain, <laughs> Captain come down. What the fuck are you doing? Boom check, sir. Checking yeah. the breach. My buddy says, hua. <laughs> right. Good fucking times, man. You know what? It's just a, it's just a, a rite of passage, man. It, if you ain't fucked with, nobody likes you. You know? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, man. Dude, this was I'm cool a- shit. 
No, it was, man. We need to do it more often. Yeah, we need to do it on a weekend. I don't know about drinking the I'm beer part. Bed. That's the first time I've drink in a long time, boy. No, I don't mean to get uh, you into no feeling. trouble. Don't be coming no, off I ain't gonna get in trouble. my account. But... No, pff, my wife, yeah, pff, whatever. Okay. Um, I, dude, you go get started in an argument, you ain't going to win. No, I win all the time. Okay. Dude, I, I'm I'm unbreakable, dude. I'm, oh, <laughs> look, I, just, I don't give a fuck. This is number five, <laughs> dude. Trust me. Military life and marriages just don't mix a lot of times. They don't. Right? They don't. Yeah. They don't. Yeah, I know Jody well. Yeah. Yeah. I was that guy one time. Not really. I'm just kidding. Not really. No. 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 no my wife just. You know, we got. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. You know, she's yeah. cool. That's the hardest thing about marrying a, a foreign girl. I love, especially. You know, there's some some nationality. I just. I just do. Dude, I walked through Ukraine. I thought I needed a damn neck brace everywhere I went because <laughs> they walk everywhere. They are all like, dude, and then they're all like in their 30s and they're wearing shit that look, makes them look like a teeny bopper. And you're yep. just like, what? oh, shit, there goes the neck again. And uh, But once you're with one, you better never turn your head when there's a woman nearby because she will scratch your eyes out in your sleep. Dude, that's and, the way it is in the Philippines, man. I'm telling you. Fiery. Oh. You play boy. That's what they say. You play boy. You play boy. My wife and uh, you know she she was uber jealous and everything. Took her five years to come out of her shell, man. But now she's starting to get it. She's developing a wicked American sense of humor. I think I oh really fucking monster, dude. Oh, that's good shit, man. Yeah, dude, we got to do this more often, man. Like I said, absolutely, dude, absolutely. Yeah, it's all about putting people together, getting information out there, and learning stuff, but. Um, you know, I, I always tell my folks, you know, organize, you know, biggest question people ask me on our program and stuff is, do you think they're going to do this? Do you think the government's going to do that? And it's not a matter of if, but when, you know, when, think, yeah, yeah, it's a matter of when. And I think most Americans see it and they don't want to give it up. I've seen more people on the left come out and ask me to teach them about firearms that were anti-gun during the COVID because of the riots and the. They were just like, this country is falling the fuck apart. And we yeah. help us. And now we got people that want to organize and they want to look. It ain't going to, you know, because biggest thing people are worried about, this shit's an investment, dude. This isn't yeah. something you just fucking, the government comes up and says, we're going to buy that back. Yeah, what are you going to offer me? Fucking $50? Uh, that's a $600 pistol, motherfucker. This is an $1,100 yeah. pistol. You know, well, you this ain't going to give me $1,200 pistol. Right. Yeah. You know, you, you know what you, I mean? You, you know, even, even then, I don't want to give shit up, you know? Um, you, you I don't even want to drop this money. bitch. I got yeah. so much money invested in it. Well, you know what? If, if it's worth it, though, you know, it's something that's going to last you a lifetime. You know, I think these think of these things as heirlooms and stuff. You know, and uh, you're gonna pass them on to your kids, and that's the thing. It's the legacy of a man or a woman to leave to the future a basis of freedom that's no less, uh, no more restricted than that was left to them. You know, and then you know. We got to ensure that our kids have the same level of freedom that we had when we grew up. Yeah. My buddy said, what's, what's your thoughts on RMR on pistols? You know what? I've been thinking about putting one on this M17. I, here's the thing. If I'm on duty negative. And the reason why I say that is because you're doing a lot of security gigs and stuff like that. It's unfortunate. I don't agree with it, but in the, in the courts, um, you know, it's a huge no, no. Uh, because now you've tricked out a weapon and they'll be like, well, you were premeditating committing murder. Motherfucker, how would you like me to miss my fucking target and hit some innocent bystanders? Did you think about that? No, you're a dumbass. All right, but um, fucking, uh, you know, I love the RMRs, especially like the Romeos and shit that they got for the uh, for the SIGs. I got one on my uh, on one of my 365 XLs and, and they're great. But if you're going to do a red dot or any type of scope, you got to learn iron sights first because ultimately, you know, Murphy's law, batteries die, sights get broken, shit falls off, screws get loose. Right. So always practice with the basics like, you know, you can go out and buy yourself a really nice Garmin GPS and it'll tell you where to fucking go. But if you don't know how to use this shit right here, your tits are in the wind right there. Your shit's in the wind because you, you're going to eventually get to the point where 
that battery is going to die. Your hub battery, your puck battery, whatever, your trimble is going to go out and then you don't know where the fuck you're going. So always learn the basics first and then work your way up and then drop it on the floor and fucking break it. Good. I mean, radiate it. Fuck me. <laughs> no, my buddy says, yep. yep. Hey, man, where'd you get that two-way hat, man? I need to get me one. I Somebody online again. <laughs> Fucking surfing Facebook. And, hey, that looks cool. Bing. Wife's like, did you buy something else? Yes. Fuck. Yeah, I'm going to find that fucking hat. I'm going to be wearing it on my next podcast. I've seen a few of them out there. Um, I was going to wear my Trump hat, but I thought, yeah, I better, probably better not. Why? You piss somebody Just off? Bring a whole other fucking animal. You know, maybe, maybe next time. No, man. Be proud. Oh, I am proud. Wear, wear a Biden hat one time. You'll I got see. a fucking Trump picture hanging in my garage the size of fucking... Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been seeing guys driving up and down the road down here, and uh, every one guy got a Ford. I mean, this thing jacked up like three fucking feet. Um, F F two fifty, Super Duty, whatever the fuck. Three flags. You got the black flag, you got the American flag, and you got a big old fuck Biden flag going off the back. And that thing's the biggest. What's the one black the flag? The, you've seen the black American flag? No. <clears throat> This puppy right here, boy. So you know about the pirate flags, right? The black American flag. Yep, all black. No blue line, no green line, no red line. Just all black. No quarter given, none expected. Hoist the black flags. Now, when the red flags, that's when all throats will be slit. Just let the bloodletting begin. <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of a political statement. It's kind of like flying the Gadsden. You know, the Tea Party used that for a while. A lot of people, what's that? Don't tread on me flag. Who created the black flag? That's what I want to know. Yeah, I, just I, I pretty much know. It kind of recently came out, and a lot of folks are starting to use it. And it's like, you know what? Okay. I, I, I buy one. What the hell? Why not? Why not? Just means no quarters. It, it basically kind of, you know, I've I seen a couple cops down in the neighborhood. They fly the damn thing. They're like, nope. I love the Second Amendment. They ain't coming into mind. That's what I love about my sheriff, Wayne Ivey. He's like, yeah, they ever start talking about coming and getting our guns. That's what I'm calling all you fuckers up, and we're creating a posse. I'm down like Charlie Brown, brother. He said BLM might jack that flag. You know, BLM might get a fucking thorn in their ass. <laughs> you talking about the Bureau of Land Management? <laughs> I don't know no other BLM. Yeah, I've never seen that black flag, man. I, like I said, I, I do not watch the news any news that I hear is from this guy that I'm talking. Well, I didn't see this on the Texas. news. I actually saw this on Facebook. Uh, really? Well, that's kind of cool because I was thinking about putting up like an old, you know, pirate flag, you know, old Jolly Roger or some shit like that because I know what that shit means. Yeah. You know, they just started coming out with this. I was like, that's even better. Fuck yeah, I like that shit. 25 bucks. It's embroidered too. And it's a heavy Cordura nylon, so you don't have to worry about it. You put it on your flagpole, it doesn't rip up like all them other cheap-ass bastards you you buy at uh, Home Depot and shit. Yeah. It lasts about three months and then it's faded. Can't find good shit anymore. It's all made in China. <laughs> Motherfuckers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <What's>, <laughs> you got to share, man. You can't get a laugh and not share. Uh, I don't know if I should say it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, can't say it. All right. You can share it with me later. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I'll share it with you later. Billy's asking, what is the milk crate challenge? And I'm sorry, that was like 30 minutes ago, buddy. I wasn't ignoring you. Uh, I, I was like looking at this the other fucking day. I'm like, wait a minute. Is this like the pie, Tide Pod challenge, snorting condoms and all that other bullshit? Yep. Chalk What's another one up for the Darwin challenge? Awards. These motherfuckers will take, and we all did it as kids. You stack milk crates up and shit, and then you step on them. But they always fucking come out from underneath you. So they try to see how high you can stack them like stair steps before you fucking break your ass coming off of them damn things. But yeah. Who does this? Uh, idiots. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's just a, it's a genre of people that, you know, they'll stack like six of them up and then five and then four and then three. And you got to fucking run up and back down and shit without falling off. And it don't ever work. God damn. I got way better shit to do than that. That's the problem with people that don't have jobs. They're going to find stupid ways to kill themselves. Wait a minute. Is that a bad thing? No, that's actually, I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Bye. Damn. No, it's been cool, man. I enjoyed the yep. shit out of this. 
Yeah, we should do it more man. often. Hell uh, yeah. Getting another get text more. coming in. <laughs> I don't know if I can read it. <laughs> he likes fucking with me, man. He, he really does. He's a good troll. Huh? <laughs> My buddy says, I don't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so go get you some milk crates, dude. Let's see this on yeah. fucking video. TikTok yeah. is calling, bro. <laughs> You know, it Billy says, oh, I used to do that kind of stuff. You know, we all did stupid shit, man. Oh, you know, we yeah. often used to jump off a fucking 40 foot ledge on a, or a trestle into the creek <laughs> and wonder why our fucking ankles were all jacked up. Creek's fucking three feet deep. Yeah. If your friends jumped off the bridge, already done it, mom. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking. Know? Oh, <laughs> that's the fun thing about growing up on a farm, man. You have cow pastures everywhere. <laughs> and we'd always have some kid that moved out there from the city and he didn't know shit. He'd be standing mm-hmm. on the fucking trestle and he'd pee off the side of it and there'd be electric wire down there. Oh, well, God. that shit will follow that stream back up. And you watch that fucker try to stay on that fucking train bridge without falling <laughs> off as he's dancing and his his dingle dangles all fucking on fire and shit. Hey, you remember that cadence? Don't let your dingle dangle dangle your in dingle the dirt. Dangle dangle in the dirt. Yep. <laughs> Pick up your dingle dangle tied t shirt. <laughs> I posted something on Facebook the other day. It had a fucking yellow bird with a yellow bill. And it said, only military people will understand. This shit don't end good for the bird. <laughs> <laughs> My buddy said, long live Antifa. I know. It gives us something to talk about, right? Yeah, I that's going to be the next topic. Anti-fascist fascists. <laughs> yep. Yep. Rap a, snick- or rap a turd and a snicker wrapper is still a turd. Yeah. I don't know, bro. Oh, well, brother, shit, what do you think, man? You want to do – how long are you going to be gone? Well, you know, it depends. If we get – we're supposed to be doing a six-day jig down in uh, um, Haiti, helping folks that – you know, that, that I feel bad for them folks. God damn, they got hit with that hurricane and then a the fucking earthquake, another hurricane, another earthquake this year. <laughs> Jesus Christ. My buddy Might said a bunch of homos. <laughs> huh? <laughs> My buddy said bunch of homos. <laughs> right. Antifa. <laughs> they do oh, need a life don't they, they oh, do need fuck a life. them all man fucking you know, beta bitches beta, betas shit god drives me nuts man i can't stand uh, i don't even want to get started because i know I'm surrounded by fucketry you're surrounded by them i'm surrounded by fucketry i got two fags that live beside me it just fucking drives me nuts <laughs> i i really don't give a damn about your lifestyles and shit. I, no, I don't either. But... I just don't need it rammed down my throat. No pun intended. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Totally yeah. agreed. Well, what but... happened to equality? Was it about equality or is it about trying to get one over on the next person? We dropped a viewer. I think uh <laughs> I think I might have struck a nerve with somebody. <laughs> oh. Oh fuck them. Oh well. Uh. My brother says yeah. easy, yeah. So easy, yeah. Yeah, I I get worked up about it, man. I don't know. I, 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 it's funny. We'll, we'll talk to... offline about it. Yeah, we go down. We go down to Key West every once in a while. And if you ever get down there, there's a couple couple bars called Bourbon Street, and then there's a place called um, uh, the Key West Lounge. And there used to be a a, a restaurant right across the street. They closed it down a while back. It's called Krabby Dicks, and. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I took a girlfriend of mine down there and, and, and they've always got a doorman standing out front and he's wearing khakis and flip flops and a bow tie and he's ripped up. Looks like, you know, he just, you know, you got a whistle out of the gym and shit, you know, and uh, a model type. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm, I'm, we're having dinner, you know, lobster, whatever. And then she's just like, she can't, and I, and I position her so it would be obvious that she's turning her head. And she's looking and looking, and here comes this dude running up in a dress and runs up and yells, baby, and throws his legs up around, wraps around the dude, and they lip lock. And Rachel two looks dudes. at him. Yeah, two dudes. And, and and Rachel looks, and she goes, oh, damn. Like that. <laughs> it's like I wasn't supposed to see that shit, you know, because we were together and stuff. And I just bust out laughing. I said, she said, you set that one up. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna go over there anyway, man. It was a, <laughs> it was funnier than shit because they fuck with the straight people. The straight people fuck with them. You have a good time. Don't nobody get hurt. It's all good. That's the yeah. biggest problem with the world. We forgot how to fucking laugh at ourselves. You know. Yeah. We forgot how to laugh. Yeah. I just I wish I had. 
I wish I could laugh at some of the shit I see, but it just ugh, fucking annoys some me. Some of it you can't. Some of it you can't. You know, it's when you're teaching fucking five year olds and six year olds in kindergarten and first grade about masturbation. I'm yeah. sorry, you're not you a, teacher. a fucking bullet. In your you're head. a fucking pedophile. You're a sick fuck. You know, you yeah. need to go to jail. That's it. And any school that fucking supports that shit, yeah. You know, it'd be one thing if you're trying to explain reproduction to little kids by the birds and the bees or something where it's a little bit more innocent, but not that overt bullshit. Yeah. Know, where does it stop? You know, and I'm, exactly. pretty sure there's, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of sex offenders out there that, that, that are thinking, what the fuck was wrong with what I did? You know? It's yeah. Like, yeah. Right. I mean, what the fuck? You're going to make everything fucking legal except what yeah. was legal is going to be now illegal. Yeah. We're reversing society, so we got a choice. We can go with the flow, or we can fight it. Yeah, or just accept it. That's the going with the flow. I ain't going no flow. Fuck that. No. I, I no nope. flow once. Uh. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we never did answer when you wait. If you oh, leave tomorrow, when, yeah. If we if we if we do, oh, well, there's the thing. You know, we don't know. We might be going to Louisiana because that that damn hurricane. We're just waiting on the word. There's like 20 companies out there that uh, need armed security over there. So I'm supposed to call a guy in the morning, find out about that. I'd rather do that than go to Haiti and be out of the country. Because one thing Dude, I'm I need a side about, gig. Huh? I need a side gig, man. Yeah. You got to have a, well, <clears throat> you see the way it works. Like, I don't know what it is in North Carolina when you do um, security gigs and shit like that. But, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a security officer, I'm sure you got to have some kind of license or something. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's usually, like, Texas is pretty much the same as Florida. You got an unarmed license and an armed license. They all call it something different. But, same uh, here in North Carolina. Yeah, Kentucky's one of the few states where it doesn't require any licensing. But there, it falls on the, and people are like, what? Well, think about it. The company is liable for your actions. So they better make sure you know your shit. You yeah. Know? So that, that's all that is. It's just personal responsibility. But um, if you got the license... Yeah, uh, you can carry over state lines and shit like that on contracts, but you have to work for a company in that state under their umbrella, and then you you fall under the statutes of that state. So you know some states are a little bit different. What yeah. types of weapons? Here in here in Florida, you can carry four types of semi-autos, nine mil, um, three eighty, which usually only your private investigators carry that as a backup, um, forty five uh, ACP and uh, forty cal. Um, you know, then you got your 38 revolver and that's, that's it. And then if the job calls for it, a patrol rifle or a shotgun, 12 gauge. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's not bad. I mean, there's jobs when you get these hurricane jobs and stuff like that, when Hugo, or was it Harvey? It was Harvey that hit Houston right before Irma came up the West coast of Florida. Mm-hmm. We were getting ready to go over there and the jobs were paying anywhere from 35 up to 65 an hour, depending on your background military was an automatic 55 and if you had uh, eight years of law enforcement or more they're paying 65 bucks an hour it's 12 hour day seven day a week minimum of uh i think three weeks on one week off that's pretty damn good money yeah so, plus most of them will pay your travel to and from the location and then um some some places will comp you for a rental vehicle and then they put you up somewhere and then they give you a per diem of 50 bucks or something like that but they which if you if you if you get an economy hotel and split it with somebody, you save some money, or you take a camper or something like that, and then you buy your food and cook, you live off twelve dollars a day that way. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, there's good money in it. We do a lot of EP details and shit like that. And then we'll do, um, you know, executive protection, um, or we'll do uh, workplace violence cases and stuff. Those tend to net anywhere from twenty five to thirty five an hour. But most of your security jobs, uh, entry level and stuff like that, unarmed down here is. You're, you're, if you're making 15 unarmed entry level, you're, you're lucky. Most of them are like 12 to $11 and then armed starts off around 13 and goes up. But yeah, yeah, it is what it is. But the bad thing is you get so many schools out there that are teaching and some of them just do the bare minimum. And I, I get students all the time, come back and do their requalifications with me. And you start talking about the four-step drill and they're like, the what? Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. You do have a training manual that was developed by the state of Florida, right? It's in there. Oh, you mean that white booklet? Yeah. I never read it. Oh, you didn't read the first page, which says it's your responsibility to know all the shit that's in this book. Oh, 
Well, our instructor never told us that. Oh, so you got to wait to be told everything. Good job. Right. <laughs> now that's why you're working $12 an hour jobs. Well, I can make 15 flipping burgers. Good. Go flip burgers. I bet you're better at that. You know, some people need sense of direction, man. <laughs> you can lead a horse to water. Sometimes you just got to pop a cap in his ass and push him in. That's right. Yep. Fuck it. That's right. Yep. I don't know, man. But, oh. Yeah, we'll have to do this again. If I'm not, yeah, if man. I, back, I know that's why you were asking and stuff because I was supposed to go to Saudi and, and, and that was, this was the coolest fucking thing ever fell in my lap. It's, I ain't going to say how much, but it's a good amount of money. 100 days, go teach the royal family how to shoot guns. On call. Put you up in a five-star, which over there, I don't know if you've ever been to the UAE, but mm -hmm. the five-star hotel it might be like a seven-star here. Yeah. And, uh, you might work one day a week. Whenever they call you, they want to go to the range. Yeah, well, the military's going to bring out a 249. You want to go? Oh, hell yeah. Let's go. Tear some Let's shit go shoot up. some saw, man. Fuck yeah, dude. I had a buddy a couple years ago that got a gig um, selling weapons to a Saudi prince. And uh, he had a lot of paperwork to go through. It took him a year to get all this shit together. But he wanted um, a 249. And have you seen those track point rifles? Mm -mm. He had a, he had a uh, uh, 338 Lapua track point. It's the, you might have seen the ads, but it's been a while since they've been out. But uh, Fox News used to post it when it first came out, like five or six years ago. It's a scope with a rifle built into it. And the scope is digital. It takes a, it, it, it's literally a viewfinder. It does all your range estimation, the Coriolis effect, curvature of the earth, all that crap. Um, it's a two stage trigger. So when you press the trigger the first time, when you're on point, you press the trigger, it locks on, but it doesn't fire. When you release the trigger, it will not, and once you release it completely, it will not fire until that point is back on the same spot on the target. And it's really? got Wi Fi. So you could be sitting, my buddies are sitting back, we're checking this thing out, and the guys give me five boxes of twenty of uh, 10 rounds of, of uh, 338 Lapu. He says, take it down the range and shoot it. I want to make sure this thing works. I'm like, really? And we're like, how the fuck does this work, right? Because I'm used to, you know, traditional scopes and stuff. And uh, finally took about five or six rounds to figure it out. But it was like, dude, this is badass. And we're putting hole on hole on hole at like three, 400 yards, you know. Like, you can't miss with this damn thing. But there was, yeah, there was uh, somebody on YouTube put out, I think Chris Kyle's wife took one out when they first came out and, and she was shooting like a sniper all day long with that damn thing. But it, 22 grand was what the rifle and scope combo uh, cost. He sold it to Saudi <laughs> Prince for 33, 33,000. Guy didn't even blink. Right. Yeah, that's what my butt. Damn, my shit. Can you hear that clicking noise? Oh, yeah. My buddy said those rifles are fucking expensive. Oh God, yes, they are. Hell, I got a I got a Remington 700 SPS tactical, right? And it's like that damn thing. I got a a, a, a night force scope on a 75 mil optics, um, and and all, everything I put in the rifle was 495 at Dick's years ago. Took that thing in, put a Timney in it, dropped it into an Accuracy International stock. That thing was 1800 bucks. By the time I got done with everything else, I'm like, fuck the rifle. Everything else was four grand, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, and that's just 308, but you know, everybody else, like, oh, yeah, that's 338 Lapua and shit. Man. So I went out and fucking, uh, you know, when the money was good, bought a, bought a, bought a damn Chi Tech. That was a mistake. Really? It was a mistake. It's a nice rifle. I can't afford to shoot it no more. It costs more than 50 <laughs> cal, dude. 408? Holy shit. But. Probably yeah, gonna be Huh? My buddy says my 338 cost me ten thousand dollars. Yeah, they ain't cheap, man. <clears throat> Vic's got a nice one out. I like that one, but nope, nope, nope. Not unless I win the lotto. No, I've seen this. My buddy's guns, and they—it's the best of the best of the best of the best shit on him. You know what I mean? He—he right. he doesn't fuck around, dude. It's, you know what? It's fucking impressive, actually. You know what? I still love these old puppies. I still pick them up for about a buck nineteen. But you get a good moise in the gaunt and stuff, and I'm I'm looking to put a uh, Archangel stock on another one. I got one in the in the closet, but um, that Archangel stock is pretty badass. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, they're not bad. I mean, they're not the most accurate thing in the world, but you put the right optics on it, you can you can you know dial them in a bit. But 
119 bucks. And they used hell, you used to be able to pick up a case of ammo for about 85 bucks. It's almost cheaper than 22. Yeah. But that SVD, though, I'll tell you what, that thing is a tack driver. I do like that weapon. But she beats my SOCOM any day. But, but anyway. Uh, dude, we've been on here three hours and 25 fucking minutes. <laughs> We still got people listening. Yeah. They're probably asleep. They're just listening in their sleep and learning. Yeah. It's probably just like, <laughs> nah. Dream learning. <laughs> I used to do that shit, listen to albums and stuff like that while I was sleeping and stuff, white noise, whatever. <clears throat> Try to learn a language in your sleep. That don't work. <clears throat> no, nah, it's yeah. been great, man. <clears throat> My, buddy's, it's been fun. My buddy said, keep on going. <laughs> God damn, yeah, man. We got to go to sleep sometime. We have to do that on a weekend when I got a full bottle of Patron and then you guys can watch me fall off my fucking chair. Fuck. God, I did that. I don't ever, I have not done that since college ever got drunk to the point where I passed out. So here I was, no shit. I come back from Afghanistan in 2014. It's like five months before I'm about ready to come home off contract and shit to bring my wife over. And I'm on Skype. I got up, and back then I used to still jog and shit before I came home, took sabbatical, got fat, and ate chicken wings. And uh, she Pink fucking, box. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Skype after I took my dog running and shit in the morning. And uh, I got a beer, and I got four fingers of scotch. You know, two more do, or, or, or a good Glen, uh, uh, a good uh, Irish whiskey or scotch every morning. And We're backed up the fucking five viewers again. <laughs> that's awesome, dude. I think we still got a couple on fucking Facebook too. <laughs> Got to be it's something crazy. You fuckers <laughs> are bad as us, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I like fucking you, rock man. on, man. <laughs> fucking, I'm sitting here in my. I got a bar. One of those. I put a copper top on my bar and everything. And and I'm sitting over there on Skype talking to my guys back in Afghanistan and and this Swedish dude that I met back in Kosovo that I had brought over to work with me and stuff. He goes, you don't have a hair on your nutsack if you don't finish that bottle. Don't threaten me with a good time. So mm -hmm. I finished the bottle. Yep. There was only 350 Ugh. milliliters. Then I got into a bottle of freaking um, absinthe. Drink eight hey, That shit tastes that. like ass pussy. Oh, excuse me. Asshole. <laughs> ass pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see what is the biological creature you just fucking described from the that to the fucking butthole <laughs> whatever's in between i guess i don't tank, know man. I mean, what's yeah <laughs> dude i did not mean to fucking say that jesus <laughs> like i like greek goose a real greek Uso, yeah but it burns going down and then i got into a bottle of moose cat that i bought over to ukraine in crimea years ago well about two o'clock i woke up at the fucking shower my friends yeah. had come over. They were bringing a power wash over to clean off all my landscape uh, bricks, get you know mildew and shit off. And they found me on the basement floor, passed the fuck out, incoherent, mumbling something. Dog was licking my face and stuff like, get up. I don't remember a damn thing. I got up. They got out of the shower. I was sober. I said, all right, cool. But, yeah, I don't do that shit no more. Billy says he's out. Good night, guys. Thanks for the... God damn awesome stream god bless you guys and god bless our troops police well, firefighters and EMT, emts yep, i hope you guys got something out of it man absolutely yep now we'll, we'll put something together we'll put something to you know put something together with a little more you know structured and stuff this is this is a good test phase and definitely wanted to get that story and i appreciate you letting me uh come no on man it's been man. fucking cool. awesome dude my buddy do. says Boone Farms. Boone's oh my Farm. God. Yeah, when you were in high school and your buddy used to work at the grocery store and he'd steal a case and he'd come to the back door, slide it in the back of your trunk and take off Ugh. and drink, drink 12 bottles of Boone Farm strawberry. Actually, you ever had soju? Old English. You ever had uh, Korean soju? Oh, God, I hate soju. I hate <laughs> soju. What about, what about uh, Old English? The 40 ounces. Uh, Tastes like turpentine, dude. It's fucking mm -hmm. hell. When I went to UC, man, it was like every 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 Monday 
and Thursday, we go down to the damn blood bank and donate plasma because Monday you get 50 bucks. And if you came back the <laughs> second time, you get 75 bucks. And we're just yeah. poor college students. That's your beer money back back in the, in the early 90s. Shit, that buy you, you know, like three or four 40 ounces and, and a case of uh, Little King seven ounce bottles. And that was a good night right there, right? And then you'd have enough to keep you going all week. But yeah, that might be why I got kicked out of the dorms. He know. said Mickey's Big Mouth. Yeah, you know the best thing about the Mickey's Big Mouth is it doubles as a potty when you're done. <laughs> Billy says strawberry. <laughs> Billy strawberry. Billy. See that man's got taste right there. <laughs> what about Mad Dog? You ain't had nothing Ugh. if you ain't had Mad Dog 2020. Dude, I used to drink Steel Reserve because it was my last name. <laughs> oh, talk about some fucking nasty shit. You know, Gee. my first beer ever was Pabst Blue Ribbon, and then I started getting into shit. Uh, Schlitz, the shits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you want? I was 11 years old, man. What do you want? Pabst Blue Ribbon is Pabst fucking Blue. nasty. Yeah. I don't drink any domestic. I, yeah, I was watching you with that Bud Light can. I was like, but, right? You don't like Bud Light? I don't like anything domestic, man. I like, I like, I like imports. Now, I will do Sam Adams. I guess that's a domestic beer, but it don't taste like it. Um, yeah. I couldn't imagine drinking anything else. I'd been fucking well, falling like good, out over here. I like a good Guinness shit. Dude, I used to used to be uh, engaged to this Swedish girl, and her dad had a brewery up in Sweden there, uh, just north of Gothenburg. And, um, and, and, and they would make this. They had these beers and everything, 10% alcohol to 12% alcohol. Shit, two or three beers, and you were done. And then they made this pear cider. And uh, that stuff was, it, you know, if, if you like Kool-Aid and stuff like that, you know how you could just drink a gallon of Kool-Aid like it was nothing. You know, yeah. Try that with this shit. <laughs> you wake up in somebody else's basement, you know? <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. That's the way soju is, dude. You don't yep. even realize it's fucking destroying you. Yep. Or a good sake. Yeah. <laughs> Billy says, I'm literally drinking Mad Dog 2020 right now. He's literally drinking Mad <laughs> Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, we love you, man. You got to come back and visit again, man. Absolutely. Awesome, dude. That is fucking uh, awesome. Mom almost said his name. Uh, my buddy says Heffenweizen. Heffenweizen. There you go. Or a good polliner. Yeah. Yeah. That was my first trip to Germany. And if it, you must drink it warm. Oh, fuck no. I can't do warm beer. Nope. Where was you at in Germany? Owen Hell. <laughs> Owen Hell. Owen Fells. Yeah. Owen Fells, Germany. And then we went to Regensburg. I had, <laughs> God, my third deployment. My my medic. And sometimes he, he might pop on here. I give him shit about that. I got to watch it, though, because if his wife's watching, uh oh, she don't know about this trip. So we go to Regensburg and we get a, like a, 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 just a just a 36 hour pass. And they were like, you know, you're not supposed to be drinking. Yeah, fuck, that didn't happen. And mm. uh, so here goes Doc, straight to the red light district. Mm. There's 400 bucks. Boom, gets some girl, does the rabbit, and that's it, and he's out. Comes up, meets us. We go out, and we get some, uh, you know, some donor kebabs. And uh, <laughs> Ooh, good stuff right there, bud. I'm telling you, bro, that's the shiznits, right? Dude, yeah. people don't even know about it. My buddy says he was in Hohensfeld, too. Yep. You remember they had that training camp. We were out in the tent city and they had the boards that would run through your tents in the middle of the night. Scare the fuck out of you, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? But uh, yeah, so then we get done eating. There goes Doc. Doc goes and gets him two twins. I'm like, what the fuck? And then we're waiting for the train and we're like, dude, we cannot be late. We're on the last fucking train. If we're late, man, Smadge is going to have a fit. And uh, Doc took off like 30 minutes before the train gets there, runs back to the red light district, knocks him out one more. How much did you spend? 1600 bucks. Jesus. $1,600? bucks, man, in the red light district. I'm like, good God. God bless you, Doc. Thank you for being back. In the <laughs> My buddy says, yep, about Holmesville. Yep. Yep. There was a little guy. We called him Geppetto. Drove a little van around out there. I don't – this was like 04, 05, something like that. 04. And uh, he'd come out there and he'd have the little soft serve Italian ice cream and shit in the cone, all the different flavors. That was mm -hmm. the favorite part of our day, man. We come back from our little stick lane and <coughs> Geppetto. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. The little things. What's that? Was that rule number thirty-two in uh, Zombie Land? Remember the little things, dude. The, uh, what donor kebabs are the shit? They are. 
They're I all, miss they're, them. They're they're better than I just had my first chicken and a cone in Houston the other day. Never heard of it. Chicken really? and chicken and a waffle. I'm like that just don't sound right. I got the buffalo chicken. That, that's pretty good shit right there. But my buddy said he was there 92 through 96. All right, and it probably ain't changed much. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's changed some of the hookers? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Some of them still might be there. <laughs> well, yeah, they're 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 in the the the, the dark light district now, but <laughs> <laughs> not in the like pink. That. They look like they look like apple dolls. Or the red, not pink. <laughs> what the fuck am I talking? About? It looks pink. It ain't really red. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got shit. We gonna be here all fucking night. So the first time I took my kids to to uh, to Europe, I was like I said, I was with this Swedish lieutenant I met in Kosovo, and we got engaged and fucking stuck it out for five years. She said, "Bring your family over." So I did. I fucking paid for tickets. My mom and dad brought my boys over, and we the last week of the trip we spent in amsterdam and and uh my family's from from the netherlands my my dad's side and uh i want to show him the old castle and shit that they had before they moved to the americas in 1623 and shit so we did a whole historical thing so anyway if you've ever been to amsterdam you know that it's a ring city and there's the 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 roads that you you know go out like spokes on a wheel and we're walking through you got to walk through the red light district to get downtown and I already got this planned out because I know my nine-year-old is going to be asking all kinds of questions about what that smell is, the hemp bars, and what the th- what the girls are doing dancing in their underwear. Because he's pretty naive. But my oldest is 14 years old, right? So we go down, and sure enough, we pass this hemp bar. And my youngest is like, that stinks, Dad. What is that? Toilets <laughs> or something? I like, know. And he says it loud enough that, like, every – this is May. And, and, and he says it loud enough that all these Russians and Germans and everybody that are visiting here, the stupid American family, is they have to fucking explain to their kids, European society. And I said, well, son, that's just bad cuisine. We're not going to eat there. We're going to go to a nice restaurant. Good, because I don't like that. And then he goes down a few blocks down, and here's this building three stories high. The bottom floor is all glass, three doors, beautiful girls in their lingerie dancing, enticing the guys in. Now, it's still daylight out, but shit, they work all day anyway. Yeah. <laughs> He's standing there like this going, Daddy, why are these women dancing in their underwear? That's nasty. <laughs> I said, well, son, do you know how your mom likes to go to the mall and go to Victoria's Secrets? Well, this is how they model ladies' lingerie. And my fiance's like, good answer. And my oldest son is so pissed off because – He's over there trying to explain to me that that was a hemp bar. It's like, I know, shut up. Your nine-year-old brother doesn't need to know it. And now he's like, Dad, you're stupid. Those are prostitutes. That's legal here in, in the Netherlands, too. Well, he's done all his Google research. He shouts <laughs> it out. And this Russian guy behind us is, like, laughing. He's like, you have problem, maybe? Uh, yeah, I have problem, maybe. You know, fuck you. <laughs> you know? Now I got to go home and explain to my second wife why the fuck my nine-year-old knows about prostitutes and weed. Thank you. <laughs> Fuck, I never lived out. She still holds that over my head. You're exposing our kids. Was oh Jesus Christ. How long ago was that? <laughs> Fucking 2008. Oh, so it's <laughs> the been kid's a while. 22 years old now or something. You know, I was like, God yeah. damn, let it go. <laughs> Fuck. I'm probably I'm pretty sure he's probably smoked a few too now. I don't know. So what do you think? It'd be uh, gone a week, two weeks, what? This will be a week. We'll see. Saudi's supposed to be 100 days. If this Louisiana thing picks up, it's going to be a long time, but it's like three to four months. But if that happens, we'll still be available. The only thing I heard about Louisiana right now, all the all the cell phone towers are down. So, but yeah, yeah. we'll find a way to hook up. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll probably take my laptop with me, and then uh, I'll get I'll get I got a solar charger for that and stuff. If we do uh, get Wi-Fi, we'll do something. We'll, yeah, man. We'll do something, man. I enjoyed the shit out of this, man. I'm sure a lot of people that watched it too. You know, here's the thing for anybody that's still, you know, the night owls, you know, you guys benefit from this being here the longest. What do you, I always tell my people, what do you want to hear about? What do you, what do you want to talk about? Shit, strike up a conversation about something. I mean, the main thing is, you know, keep it political, military, law enforcement, gun related, stuff like that. But, you know, shit, we don't have all the answers, but sometimes we learn shit from you guys. So, yeah, bring, bring it, man. I definitely would love to hear from you guys. I know next time I'm not drinking six fucking beers. Is that how many you had? Yeah, man, but I, I, you got to realize I ain't drinking over a year. I thought you only had like two or three. I, I'm so sorry, dude. That I did not. 
dude, do not throw me under that bus. No, 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 no. Don't you ever let that guy back on your program again. <laughs> That's my thing, dude. My my wife and kids not here. They're at the beach right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my nice. wife's dad took him to the beach because my little boy's been begging to go, and I can't – I'm not going to take – yeah, it, it, you know, it's just one of them things where I'm like, if we're going to go to the beach, we're going to go on the weekend because it's only a couple hours away. You know, I'm not going to oh, yeah, yeah. vacation days on a September fucking vacation. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get you know what that's what I'm <laughs> fucking that's kill time, my buddy says. It's what? Fucking kill time. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh, man. Uh it's getting damn, it's already two eighteen in the morning. Holy yeah, balls. Is. I gotta be up at seven, so yeah. yeah. No, well we'll 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 figure something out and uh get yeah. another one together and uh I'll uh make a whole uh I don't know. We'll, fi- we'll figure it out. We'll uh, start a whole new here, podcast something with something too. like this. We got, you know, like Casey and a couple of the folks that were in here. They're uh, they're all here local here. And, and uh, one of the things I'd like that we're gonna we, we do is once a month we get together. Um, <clears throat> we meet in person. You know, rent a place or whatever. Or somebody's backyard. We do some training. Like we may do medical uh, one week. I'm a BLS instructor, so I do the AED CPR and then tourniquets things like that. And then I did T for T triple C for a while. Um, where we may go over like an AR 15 platform, building your own rifle or something like that. So <clears throat> we get something like that. I've always thought about doing either YouTube or a zoom or something like that, where you can pull people in and, uh, if they want to sit through it, fine, you know, yeah. the, the merrier, but, uh, no, that'd be good, man. Yep. And then, you know, there's always that contact thing, you know, it's like shit starts going down. People got information. This doesn't look right ask some questions if you need to know you know but uh that's what it's all about man the more we communicate the more squirmish everybody on the left gets yeah and that's good that's good that's what we need don't be don't be silent don't let them push you nobody puts baby in the corner <laughs> <laughs> i agree yeah I agree. righty, guys i appreciate everybody listening in uh yep Sean, man, it's been great, dude. We got to do some more. Awesome. Uh, like I said, I'll only drink three beers next time. I'll, I won't try to. S- it's one of them things, man. If there's 30 beers sitting right here, I'm going to drink 30 beers. Yeah, but you know we're getting old if we turn this into a juice bar. Oh, we can do that, too. Mm-mm. Just start making fucking drinks right here. <laughs> you sitting know there making fucking smoothies. <laughs> yeah. It's kale. Fuck that. Have you ever eaten kale? <laughs> no, no. I would rather chew a white dog turd. <laughs> and it should taste like ass pussy yeah <laughs> yeah the old ass pussy the old ass pussy dude you know, that slipped out so bad dude <laughs> you, know, you got me i'm gonna go be going on that and then tj gets me started on twat waffle and it's like okay. oh yeah 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 Hammer sorry guys pussy. we don't mean to be offensive but you know hey old grunts die you know our habits die hard absolutely yeah i well if we're gonna throw another one out, i gotta be, do the old fucking uh Old wolf pussy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just got a picture in my head reminded me of a date back in the early 90s. Oh, boy. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, man. Oh, little God, woofy, dude. woofy, huh? Well, yeah. 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 The 90s wasn't definitely nothing like the fucking millenniums. <laughs> well, the 90s, though, I mean, you know. It was different. They shaved it, but not quite completely. You had a, a landing strip there. Yeah, you know, yeah. Stuff like starting that. to evolve. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like the seventies. <laughs> Whoa! What the fuck? <laughs> ah! Oh, Afro. <laughs> Looking like Angela Davis. Jesus yeah. Christ! What the fuck. <laughs> good stuff, man. Well, right, brother, man. we'll uh, <laughs> close good, it man. out here. And man, I had a hell of a time, man. Honest to God, uh, it's been great. Uh, can't wait to have you back on. We'll like do we can like we can do a podcast. Uh, we'll figure something out. We'll talk offline. Hell yeah, hell yeah. yeah. How many people good. can you get on here at one time? Oh, 10 people. Holy shit. Yeah, Holy 10 people shit. I can have in this lobby talking nice. at one time. Let me know if you ever get somebody that like, you know, you know, like some of the names you mentioned before. I like to get in there and just be like live vicariously through some of their fucking shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, I got contact. I, <clears throat> I got contacts with all them dudes, man. I've 
established a pretty good relationship with them. Uh, some more reserved, you know what I mean? It's more about, uh, uh, how do I put it? Well, more about what they're doing, you know what I mean? I don't mean it as a bad way, but some guys are like, I don't give a fuck. I'll come on. I'll fucking like, yeah. for instance, Dale Comstock. That dude's a badass dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. He doesn't give a shit. Right. You know? Um, so yeah, he would be a great one to just come on and just fucking chime. Right. So cool. Some of the other guys, you know, they're more of, you know, they, they're running their companies. They don't want to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which I which I totally get, and that's why some of the questions I ask are kind of, you know, it's it's you know it is what it is, you know. Yeah. So, but yeah, man, we'll we'll figure something out, and uh, I'll I'll stay in touch with you. Keep in touch with me. Let me know what's going on, man, and we'll figure some shit out from there. Okay, sounds good, bro. All right, brother. Have a good one and uh, safe travels and appreciate you. Know, you. Yeah, brother. Yep. All, All right, man. man. All right. Later. You got to say your uh, you got to say your goodbye deal. I got to say my goodbyes. All right. So on Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, we always got this thing we say, man. Guys, keep your powder dry. Keep your magazines loaded. Keep them guns close at hand. The time is coming. We're on the march. They're on the run. Be good to each other. Hell All yeah! Right, next time. That's Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, and I'm out. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs>